All right, I think we are live, guys. Steve So. Here. One on TNT4. We're starting it off with Colby Northcutt and Martin here. Fight here. Women's bout. Very exciting matchup. We just tuned in, and right now, Courtney Martin just got the takedown on the very skilled striker. Uh, Northcutt on her back. Could be in trouble here. I mean, Martin does have a good Brazilian jiu-jitsu background. Uh, they were just talking about that on the stream here for one. Very exciting card. Very happy for everybody tuning in. If you're just joining, smash the like button so we can get that algorithm pumping. Made it just in time for this first fight on this card. And right now, Colby Northcutt looks to be in a bit of serious trouble. Uh, she is getting back up to her feet, but... Was in a bad position, and I, I mean, got to give some respect to her opponent landing the takedown early in the fight. If she can continue to attack with offensive takedowns and get on top, Courtney Martin can definitely win this fight. As of right now, though, uh, positionally, Colby Northcutt, in the better of the two, has her back up against the cage. But if I'm Northcutt, I'm trying to separate. I'm trying to do more of a striking heavy game plan from kickboxing range. Her opponent, the shorter girl, looking to get inside, is getting inside, and is able to put her up against the fence. And this is the total opposite of what Kobe Northcutt wants here. This could spell serious trouble for her. She's on her back once again. That's two takedowns already for Courtney Martin. This could potentially be a long night here for Northcutt. She is shooting for an arm bar from Garden. In women's MMA, those guard arm bars tend to work on a regular basis. Right now, Kobe Northcutt does have a bit of a triangle position. She's not going to get it here as of right now. Uh, but still, dangerous position. Potentially could get a submission. She is shooting for the deep half as she has this near triangle position. Has the arm of Courtney Martin, but isn't able to do much. But she may have it straightened out. Northcutt has it, it looks like. Northcutt just got the tap. Colby Northcutt just got the first round submission of a very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter. I am very impressed with Northcutt off of her back. She did exactly what she should. Long girl, used that long length to get the win. I mean, wow, great performance. That was very quick in the first round. I thought she would get a decision, but she gets the first round victory. Excellent performance there for Colby Northcutt to start off the event. Cannot wait to see what we have Smash the like button if you're just tuning in. We're looking for five likes. We're sitting at one. Thank you, everybody, for coming here. Kobe Northcutt just got an epic win. Great to see. She's a very likable girl. Bro the brother uh, is Sage, obviously. So she has a fighting family. And she gets a submission. She's a 36-time karate world champion. How crazy is that? She is karate at this point. Wow. Excellent performance for Kobe Northcutt. The next fight on the card, we're actually going to see... Some striking only, which is going to be very fun to watch. I'm super excited to see this next fight. The favorite was Northcutt to win, and she did get the win. But I will say, I'm surprised that Martin was unsuccessful completely on the ground. I mean, she was outmatched when they got to the ground here. Very good performance. Very good performance for Colby Northcutt. All right, they're giving the official decision. Submission round one. If you're just tuning in, smash that like button. We're looking for five. We're sitting at two. We've got some very exciting fights coming up. We're going to be here for the entire card. We've got a while to go. Very happy to be live streaming this event. Super exciting card. Colby Northcutt gets the victory. Submission by armbar. That's so impressive. Wow, got to give respect to Colby where it's due. That's a very good win. Good win for her career. I mean, doesn't have a ton of fights. I believe this was just her third professional bout. And she got the win over Courtney Martin here. I'm impressed. Martin had a decent amateur background. Um, Very good. Sorry, I'm just laughing at some comments here. Excellent work, excellent work. Colby North cut the winner. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Predicted Colby would get the win. Submission? Even more so impressive. She gets the finish in the first round. She does have a good ground game as well. That's something that's definitely a uh, factor. I'm excited to see where she goes. I mean, she's so tall for the weight class. Super long limbs and long neck. Yeah, good win for Northcutt here. 
If you haven't yet, guys, smash that like button. Let's get that algorithm pumping. We're looking for five likes. We're at two. We need just three more. So smash the like button. Armbar submission. That was impressive. Good win. Pretty good win. Her husband's birthday as well. It was Raymond Daniels, who's a hell of a kickboxer. Congrats to uh, Kobe Northcutt. Excited to see what this next fight is going to look like with just striking only. This is going to be a very good matchup. Very good matchup. So they do have betting odds on DraftKings for one championship. I do think they need to do it a little bit better. Appreciate the like, my brother. Appreciate you always tuning in, man. I really wish that one championship would, or I really, I, I guess I wish odds makers would start getting the odds out earlier in the week. I did the betting preview video, and then next thing you know, it the odds come out just before the fight, so I couldn't really give you guys betting picks. But you know the predictions, you know the fights that make sense for betting. Starting it off good, though. I, I like that fight. That was impressive, and I think Colby Northcutt, has an exciting future in one championship. She's developing a ground game. That's scary for her opponents. That's going to be a struggle. A lot of girls. Eddie Alvarez is going to be fighting. Very exciting. If Eddie Alvarez wins this fight, title shot. And him and Christian Lee is an epic matchup. This next fight's going to be entertaining, striking. Pure striking. Very excited to see what happens here. Olby Northcutt. Mandy Arva lost her last fight to Jeanette Todd. But yeah, I like Jackie Boonton a lot. Very exciting. That's going to be a fun fight. I'm picking her to win it. I think that Boonton, up and coming girl, has the skills to do it. I think she gets gets a very good performance. Man, this the one championship stream on TNT. Very choppy. Or rather, the stream on Bleacher Report Live. Let's really see his main card, guys. It's going to be insane. Yeah, I agree, man. I'm a big one championship fan. I really am. I really think they need to buckle down and get that American market as more of a mainstream focus because it could definitely build here. You look at Bellator's success, you look at PFL, you look at one, I think they're all excellent leagues. I think those are the three, three horsemen uh, as far as the, you know, the top leagues outside of the UFC. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there. I personally am a huge fan of PFL one and Bellator. Obviously here we're uh, talking about one championship. I am excited for when fans are back for all mixed martial arts organizations. If you guys have seen the one championship walkouts, now imagine that with a loud crowd, the you know, those epic walkouts. They do it similar to like the Pride Days mixed with a little WWE action. All right, they're talking about this uh, striking only bout here. It's Muay Thai, but it's Muay Thai with... MMA gloves. It's a very interesting matchup. They're in Singapore continuously for these fights. That's very cool. We're excited to see what happens with all these bouts. To be honest, one championship. Action-packed card. Jackie Bunton versus Ekaterina Vendareva. Vendareva. Cool name there. There is a three knockdown rule, something to note for the Muay Thai rule set. Three knockdown rule, which I do actually like. Um, there's three knockdowns in one round, especially with the MMA gloves. I mean, most likely they deserve to be stopped because you're obviously getting badly hurt. 
they move the card very, very fast. I mean, the fights are back to back to back. They waste no time. And I love that about one championship. I do wish, though, we could have a full crowd there because these fights would have so much hype with that. The voice, I mean, they have the, uh, I think it's the same woman from the Pride FC doing the uh, walkout announcements, but it, it may just be somebody that sounds similar to it. If you're just tuning in, smash that like button. We need those four, maybe five likes to uh, keep that algorithm pumping up. Ekaterina Vendareva making her way to the cage at the moment, and it's striking only Muay Thai rules with MMA gloves. It's one of the most intense combat sports that exist. Those small gloves change the game. Expect knockouts, expect violence, and expect to be very entertained. Ekaterina Vendareva. She has more of a traditionalist Thai style. Her opponent here is going to have a little more of a freestyle. Yeah, Rug Rug is fighting. We'll be talking about him very soon. He, I believe, is the first fight on the main card. So we have this Thai bout, and then we have Shinya Aoki. If you don't know Shinya Aoki, you should. The guy is a submission ace. And then Rug Rug is going to be fighting as the first fight to open off the main card. Right now, we're still in the lead card. One championship, man. I'm loving covering these events. I think this might be the last TNT event for a while, which will suck. Because, I don't know, I won't be doing no 4 a.m. live streams if they are doing those fights at weird hours. But we'll definitely give some predictions for one continuously. I'm a big fan. I am a huge one championship fan. I've, I've grown to love it. I think it's excellent mixed martial arts. I think they're doing a lot of things right. I just think they have to appeal a bit more to the American market. Oh, bro, I cannot wait for Bellator next week. It's probably the best light heavyweights. Like, I mean, Bellator's light heavyweight division is so stacked, and that card is going to be absolute fire. I cannot wait to see how Rumble does. And then also Sergio Pettis fighting in the main event for the world title. Great card. I can't wait to break that down. I'm going to try to release these Bellator videos even earlier in the week because the event's on Friday. This week, PFL was a little bit late. Um, so I do apologize about that. I want to get out videos a bit sooner. You know, UFC is Sunday. Hopefully I can maybe get Bellator out on a Sunday as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jan Blahovitz does beat him. I'll be honest with you. I think that Jan Blahovitz is the most underrated UFC champion right now. I mean, if you beat Adesanya the way he does, I think Rumble should sleep. Uh, um, Yoel. Yoel is very skilled, but he has been knocked out before. He hasn't fought in light heavyweight, I believe, in a while now. And if you're going in there against Rumble Johnson, and Rumble looks in great shape, I'm going to note that. I don't know if you guys have seen him. I do think I'm leaning Rumble as well. He hits so hard. And I don't think Yoel is going to beat him. You look to the Costa fight, think of how close and competitive that was, and now think about Rumble Johnson's skill set. You know what? You're right. Volkanovski, he's the most... He gets forgotten about. Max Holloway is practically still the champion to the commentators in that weight class. He really doesn't get the respect. If Volkanovski can go out there and beat Brian Ortega, I do think that really solidifies him. But I don't know. That's a tricky matchup. Ortega looked very good. Granted, it was Chan Sung Jung. Yeah. Volk, I mean, and that loss was not even in the UFC. So that loss is not a concern. He's an excellent fighter. If Glover beats... Jan Blahovic, that would be crazy. I really don't think he will, man. I think Jan is going to beat up Glover. Because he can kind of do everything Glover can, but maybe better. You look at the guys Glover has beaten, a bit more one-dimensional. Look at the Tiago Santos fight. You look at Anthony Smith. Both those guys struggle with very good grapplers. Jan Blahovic has very good takedown defense. He's good with his jiu-jitsu. Knockout power in the hands. Has a good chin. I think, I'm going to be honest though, man, I love Glover, but I think you actually might see Glover get knocked out in the first two rounds. Or I think he's going to get beat up pretty bad. Because Jan Blahovic is, a, I'm telling you guys, Jan Blahovic right now is an animal. Because Adesanya right now, if you watch that, look at that Polo Costa fight. Adesanya looked amazing. Then you look at the Jan fight. Completely a different bout. Lost that fight. I mean, granted, it was competitive for sure. And I do think, I think Israel Adesanya is still on his way to become one of the all-time greats but sometimes you have to face that loss and Jan Blahovitz is that guy that's gonna beat you when you're not at that point because Jan has taken all the losses I mean how many losses does he have oh Stipe is gonna be 
underrated forever. People just never gave him the respect. If you guys are just tuning in, smash that like button as well. Looking for five likes. But I agree, man. Stipe underrated. Jan Blahovic potentially could beat John Jones, man. I definitely agree. The thing is, Jones, I think they need to get that fight made with Nganu. Now is the time. Let's do it. The biggest fight in UFC history. Pay the man what he's worth. Just pay the man. I don't care what he wants. If I was Dana, I'll pay him $15 million because, to be honest, to fight Francis Ngannou, you deserve $15 million, especially with John Jones' resume. I don't think John Jones should ever have an issue with getting the right pay. Yeah, Francis definitely does have Stipe's number, but at the end of the day, it is because of Stipe that we have Francis because Stipe created the beast of Francis. Yeah, Stipe versus Dos Santos, the rematch. That was great. The first fight was an excellent fight as well. Oh, Pedro Munoz, Jose Aldo? That is an interesting fight. I'm really liking Pedro. He he beat Frankie Edgar. Like, obviously, the judges didn't see it that way. But come on now. Like, I, I thought he won that fight. I think that he's going to also uh, beat Aldo. Dillashaw Sanhagen, I know, that's such a drop of main events. I'm like, well, come on, guys, at least get me a better main event. No disrespect, I love Michelle, but that's not a main event that has the fans clamoring at, at, by any means. That's a bad main event. I don't like seeing that. I actually get irritated when I see that as the main event because that's not a high-level main event. To me, that's not a main event. That's, that's to be 100% honest, that's a main card opener at best, and now it's the main event doesn't make sense i think better off get a different fight for sanhagen book him get somebody else tj dillashaw why does he get all, he's been out for a while tj also tested positive for drugs if you test positive for drugs and now you come back fighting in the number one contender fight and now you're not available i think bring in the next best guy i don't know i think maybe well, what if we do sanhagen versus i don't know a name i mean maybe you could do on short notice, would Cody Garbrandt take that fight? I'm gonna. I think that uh, Waterson could be in trouble there against Marino. But right now, one championship is live. Let's talk about this fight: Bunton versus Vandereva. Very good fight. Muay Thai action. Bunton has some power in her hands. Vandereva, very traditional, technical Thai style, has excellent skills. Lots of experience for both girls. Vandereva has one of the scariest faces. She just stares intensely at you. And she's throwing big power in her hands as well. She's looking for big shots. She wants that Jeanette Todd rematch most definitely. But I think Bunton here could definitely pull this off. Bunton is very relaxed. That's something that I like. Moving well from the outside range. The Barbie could win it, man. So I would say that Vandereva definitely being the more aggressive of the two. But Bunton has the better hands. And I do think watch out for her counters. Cruz versus Edgar would be insane. That would be crazy. Excellent fight here. In Muay Thai. I love covering Muay Thai. It's a very fun sport with MMA gloves. With the traditional like Thai style gloves, I don't have as much interest. But with the MMA gloves, you catch my interest with any striking art. I mean, boxing with MMA gloves would be insane too. And there is moving forward, but Bunton definitely cracking her with some shots on the outside. Very good card in store. Vandereva and Bunton pulling off a very good striking battle here. We started off with Northcutt, and now they're going at it. Center of the octagon, not crazy stuff happening, but you can definitely see the punching advantage is in the favor of Bunton here. Vandereva, good range, good kicks. I do think potentially Bunton could land a big overhand shot and catch her. Vandereva misses with a wide hook. Vandereva with a nice low kick, though. Vandereva is doing more than moving forward, but good counter movement and striking from Buntan. This first round is very close. That's going to be a hard one to score. They might lean Buntan, though, on the scorecards, but honestly, that's tricky. No knockdowns, and I do think competitive action. Just a few seconds left in this round. End of the round. All right, let's check these comments out. 
Neil Magny, Geoff Neal would be an excellent main event. Michael Key and the match. Sorry, man. I don't know why your message was retracted, bro. It wasn't me. Um, if the matchmaker Aldo versus Munoz and Cruz versus Edgar are two awesome fights, but I do have a feeling. I don't know, Cruz. They might want to save him and Edgar. I mean, Edgar got not bad in that last one. I think Sean O'Malley might find himself getting a huge fight like that. I don't know how, but uh. He's got the name value, man. He pulls in a lot of fans. If I'm Cruz, I might be interested in fighting Frankie Edgar. But I think Sean O'Malley is the fight to make. Let me grab a water real quick. All right. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Second round, the judges feel that's a 10-10 round. Do I necessarily agree with that? Honestly, maybe. Because I think both girls were fairly effective at what they were doing, but nothing substantial landing. If O'Malley has a non-ranked opponent next, he's going to beat him up, man. Sean O'Malley is 100% top 15 level. Like he, and he, he has the style where he destroys gar guys that aren't at top 15 level. Big shot attempts there by Vandera. Verdeyev is looking for a big overhand. Hasn't been able to land. Bunsen is looking to close distance and mix it up. She hasn't been able to land. To be honest, their styles are kind of canceling one another out. O'Malley might be a little injury prone, but I, I think time will tell. Let's see how his next fights go. Right now, I would say Bunton and Vandera are in a very competitive 50-50 fight. We might see this fight being a draw for all we know. I mean, I... Don't know, 10-10 rounds in the States are very uncommon, but they said they felt that was an even round. I do believe they use a 10-point scoring system for the Muay Thai bouts. That Randy Costa and Giannis fight, I cannot wait to talk about. That fight is going to be fun. So they're mixing it up with kicks, both of them. Wow, big right hand from Bhutan did land. But then you have it eats a good shot. I mean, she got knocked down by a head kick against Jeanette Todd. Punches she definitely can take on the chin. And then Vendrieva looking to close distance and throw some strikes. Hasn't landed anything significant. Bhutan moving well. Kicking to the body. Mixing it up nicely. I mean, Bhutan is definitely putting on a decent performance here. Uh, but Vendrieva and her are both very competitive. It seems like more of a 50 50 fight than anything. Yanez is like a, a mini Masvidal, in my opinion. Um, I think Masvidal, I think uh, Yanez is going to be like one of the next hot prospects for sure. I'm very impressed. But Costa's not easy. Bunton closing the distance. Throws an elbow inside as well. With this fight right here, how do you score it? See, that's the thing about Thai boxing, right? What is the scoring that they're doing? Is it about the effective ag aggressiveness or is it necessarily a cage control? It's in, it's it's a different scoring system how one does it. I do believe this round is towards Buntan, but I don't know for sure. I really don't know how they're going to score this fight. It It's Muay Thai action with the MMA gloves under one's rules. So they have their own system. It looks competitive, to be honest. But I think Buntan has gotten the better of her in this round. Body kick there from Buntan. Buntan's looking for punches. That's her goal here, to land big punches to the chin. I don't know, man. I think I think that, that was Buntan. Cheeto Vera versus Davy Grant, if they fought. I think I think Cheeto Vera beats up Davy Grant pretty pretty bad. I like Davy. He's a good dude and he's fun to watch, and that's perfect for Cheeto. Cheeto Vera is scary. Yeah, I think I think Boonton probably has it right now. I, I don't know if they're scoring a one round draw, one round for Boonton. That's the thing. We're gonna find out. With the Muay Thai, we're just starting to call Muay Thai. It's never been a thing I've covered before, but with one they do it. So they, they gave two thumbs down, bro. Hey, listen, bro, if they wanna give a thumbs down, that's on them. 
the end of the day, they they're jealous of the the high level commentary. They don't want to join the fun. Some people get upset. I appreciate you though, baby Yoda. You're always looking out, bro. You're a good man. Appreciate you tuning in as well, my brother. I saw your comment on IG, man. Good man, bro. Bender Yeva is looking for low kicks, whereas Bunton is looking for big power shots. Dude, I think, honestly, winner of this round could win the fight. I don't know. I, one championship score. We, and this is Muay Thai. This is not MMA. It looks like MMA. This is Muay Thai. Right now, if I'm the, the judge, I think Buntan is probably going to get a decision. I think she could potentially be winning uh, the first two. The face of one... <sighs> So it's tricky. The face of one championship should be their champions. But truly, I mean, Mighty Mouse is a huge name there. Eddie Alvarez is a huge name there. John Lineker is a fairly big name there at this point. I feel like, though, I, if I have to give anybody the face of one, I think Ong Lang on Song is, is definitely one of the faces. And I'm starting to feel like the next guy on the rise to be the one is Christian Lee. Because I think he's a long, long state champion. Rod Tang for for Rod Tang for the the striking. But I thought you meant for MMA. For for striking, it's got to be Rod Tang. Definitely Rod Tang. Because they have the best striker like around. Uh, and but the MMA fans obviously don't have that same striking only interest. Yeah, they did want Eddie to be the guy, but Eddie Alvarez hasn't done it so far. If I was a betting uh, on this fight, which the Eddie Alvarez fight, I did not bet on, but. If I was to, I wouldn't throw on Eddie. I would actually skip the bet on the Ray Unuk and the Eddie fight. If I mean, you could bet on Eddie, but come on, man. His performances in one have been too nerve-wracking and too awkward that I just... I think that the MMA gods may give him a defeat in, in this fight. Even though I pick Eddie to win, and I think he should win on paper. If you're throwing down on Eddie, just be intelligent. I think he should come through for you. And I did think about throwing down on my bookie, but I have not yet. I might do it live, though. Now, you, if you guys are, if some of you guys are doing it, I might have to. Bhutan is mixing it up so nicely with the hands and kicks. She just won the fight. Bhutan's looking. As of right now, I haven't yet. I was going to do a live bet. I'm going to pull up my bookie after this fight and we can check it out. Right now, I think Bhutan won the fight. There's no draws in one Super Series. That's something that... Who they just... I don't know. So there's no draws, but they choose a winner. That's weird. That's very weird. One championship does it interesting, bro. I don't like that, actually. I would rather just do an overtime round. If it's a draw, it's a draw. I don't give a fake winner, you know? Yeah, bro. I got I'm about to go. I'm going to go check it out, man. I'm about to pull up my bookie right now. Let's see what we want to do, man. It's so, it's so weird. One, man, they got to release the odds earlier in the week. I, I like... If they released them on a Monday, we could catch them early. We, we know the, the mistakes the bookmakers make sometimes. But with one, they release them with so much time before the fight. Just, it just happens like that. Like I don't like how they don't have uh, enough time. Not the one odds. I swear the one odds were on. Are any of you guys betting one right now? Because if you are, let me know. Looking. For one betting odds. The bookie. I don't know if I'm blind. I'm not seeing them there. Yeah, that could be true because they overturned it. You're right. And then, you know what? That's right. They have to then. Yeah, you might be totally right, dude. You just said it. That's, you know what? No contests that change like that are very risky for the bookies. I totally understand why they wouldn't. Yeah. At least you already changed it. At least you already cashed. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I thought Yuri Lapagus could have definitely won that fight. And then he got a DQ. Hey, it is what it is. Dude, it's... One thing I will say with one is they, they have to get a few of those kinks out. But that takes time. You know, it's... Even though they've been around for the a while, they haven't been at the highest level for that long. Yeah, that dude, that was a money pick. Dude, Yuri Lapagus, I... 
had a lot of hype behind him, and I did think he had a chance, but it looked like Eddie was whooping him. All right, so they do have some odds down right now. I, I didn't find them on my bookie, unfortunately. Sports bet, bet online, bookmaker, and five dimes. Honestly, if you guys are looking for the most consistent betting site with having odds for every MMA league that I've ever seen, it's bet online. So if you need to find the bookie that will always be available, betonline.ag. And this is, they don't pay me anything. I don't have any connection to them. Um, I actually made some money on them and then kind of got screwed out of it by some bullshit. But uh, I still, I got to respect them as far as their consistency with un unleashing like all the odds. Who won here? Yeah, so Boontang got the win. And now her opponent's shaking her head like, no way, no way. But I think that was a justified victory. I think that you have to give that fight to Boontan. Fuck it, I don't know. It's competitive, though. That was practically an even fight. I don't know. That's tricky. If you're just tuning in, smash the like button, guys. We need 10 likes, so 10 likes is the goal here. Yeah, she looks shocked. I mean, I see why she was disappointed because it was very close. But I think Boontan did edge her out by just a bit. But, I mean, you don't know how the girls feel like when they're in there. You don't know a different camera angle. Who the hell knows? I think that Boontan won, but I am not claiming to be the king of Muay Thai judging. But I do think I have an idea of how to judge a fist fight. All right, so if you guys are looking to bet, you can only bet on the main card. Ong Lang on Song, Rainer Dorita. Dorita opened up as the favorite. Umar Kane is such a big favorite. At minus 550. Ray Unuk is a plus 310. Alvarez, all right, so Alvarez is a minus 400 favorite. I don't love... Betting on him. At minus 400, Ray Unuk maybe is a dog to bet on because he's a guy with some skills, man. I don't like, they don't have props or anything either. That does annoy me. I wish we had prop bets. Can you imagine we could throw money down live for one? One's product will improve substantially if they can somehow get in contact with an American or, or European, even some bookie, get in contact with, they need to get kind of like how the UFC has now done their deal and they're working with DraftKings and they have the odds in the tail of the tape. If these MMA leagues can somehow find a, a way to get connected with these bookies, um, I do believe one championship stock rises. You can live bet on it, more people will tune in. Because think about it, how many of the fans bet on fights? A serious amount at this point. And they're missing a huge market by not connecting with one. They need to. They definitely do. They need to just force it down. I don't know who will do it. We'll, of Somebody will. I would like live betting on one. I would like prop bets. It's a high-level MMA league. We should have the full amount of options. You guys can make a, a good amount of money. Maybe the bookmakers are, are nervous to end up losing because, I mean, if you look, Rainer D. Reader is a minus 175. And then look at Umar Kane, minus 550. And then Eddie Alvarez, minus 400. Yo, what's up, Kid X? I'm doing good, man. Well, how are you doing, man? Oh, we're looking for 10 likes. We're getting super close. We're at 8, so two of you smash that like button. Phone a friend. Tell them smash the like button. Anybody, really, smash that like button. We're looking for 10 of them. That's the goal. The girl, uh, Puntan, is talking. Said there's room for improvement, but she felt she landed more. Which she did. She landed more. She won. That's fair. It's a fair decision. You can't you can't hate on that. Yeah, all in on song. Odds were how widespread do you remember how widespread the odds were when they originally opened? I'll be honest, I don't remember. I looked this morning, but I think they released sometime today. And I did look earlier today and saw that Ong Lang Song was the underdog, but I forget what they're at. So if you remember what the odds were, at least approximately, let me know because I forget. Rainer De Reader at minus 185. I wouldn't throw down on him unless it was a submission prop, but they don't have the props. For Umar Kane, I would skip the bet. For Eddie Alvarez, Ray Unuk, unless you're betting the dog, again, tricky to bet on Eddie Alvarez. He's a guy that does not always show up. Ong Lang and Sung upset is possible, but I still like the reader. Some of the bets on one would just be unappealing if you are looking for bets. But still, if they had props, it could definitely open up the options. Yeah, Rain, dude, I think Rainer's going to choke him out. He's going to do it again. He's on the rise, man. No offense to uh, Ong Lang Sung. He's a great guy, good fighter. But Rainer D. Reader is 
that guy right now. And they don't let us parlay either. There's so many, so limited, man. That's the thing with what we need to find a way. I don't know exactly how it works, the ins and outs, but I know if they get connected with a betting um, or a bookie site, they could make a sponsorship. Maybe they set things up. I don't know. I think all MMA should have like a full betting. Does PFL, PFL lets you do parlay, right? I think they let me parlay. Let me see. Checking out my bookie right now. I feel like my bookie is like the true, um, like the true odd site. That's like, yeah, it's not, I wouldn't say it's, what's the word? I wouldn't say it's bad, but I wouldn't say, I would say it's the easiest one to use. Like, all right, let me just grab. Um, hold on real quick. Let me just grab my bookie and start bed. I'm just clicking on something so you can parlay the PFL. I'm gonna be doing PFL live. If they have live bets for PFL, we can definitely have a good time doing that. Super pumped for that PFL event. You think Bodog's better, dude? Honestly, it might be. I, I'm open to all sites, bro. It's just I, I I set up on my bookie account and then I'm just like it's like the it's the lazy man site. And then betonline.ag I had an account with, but uh when I first got in I did something so stupid. I I chose to they match the money, but of course this was probably about a year ago. I didn't fucking read the fine print. And then they have you, you know, put in your money, whatever, but you have to double it to to take it out or no 25 times it's something crazy i made about 500 600 bucks on a prop and like dude i i played the bookies and i felt like a true savage when i did so and then like oh yeah you can't take it out unless you match the money and then just i, I was like oh yeah you know what all right i'm gonna match the money quick in one one week and then i started putting money on some boxing events and that's when i'm like shit you can't fuck around with boxing sometimes man Showing a clip of Ong Lang Sung and then Muhammad Ali next to one another. Yep, that's it. That's the thing. It was like, it was something crazy, bro. You had to like multiply your money. And I was like, damn, I, I really just got screwed. I thought I had made some serious money, but I was stupid. You got to read. And, and then, you know, I, I think I remember the fight. It was like this boxing match. Who was it? I put a, I like, I was like, fuck it. I'll put 500 bucks down. This guy's a lock boxer. Like I was, I was like, all right, fuck it. The guy I bet on. I cannot remember his name, but I think it was this kid, Joshua Pacino, was there his opponent. He was this like Filipino boxer with like a big awkward, left hand, like an awkward style. This guy puts a beating on the kid. I just remember thinking to myself, do research, bo like boxing. I honestly just like, was like, oh, you know what? Like how many, you know, boxing, how it goes sometimes. Some, some bad matchmaking that they know who the favorite is. And that was a mistake. Yeah, I don't know who it was, man. It was it was like flyweight division. It was it was weird, man. It was a stupid mistake. But uh, no, we learned our lesson. Bet on MMA, or if I'm gonna bet on boxing, I'm gonna really study those fights, not just uh, go off the odds. Shinyoki and Edward Faliang. See, they have a. It says they have a connection with DraftKings Sportsbook having the odds. Does DraftKings Sportsbook have the odds? Because it says they're, they're partnered with them. Let me see. I swear I didn't see no, no bets. Let's see. If DraftKings does have it, though, it, it screws anybody outside of, like, certain states in the U.S. Because you can't collect your winnings. Like, if I bet where I'm at, I don't think I can collect my winnings in my state. Because they don't allow the bets. And honestly, I like, I like doing my betting with cryptocurrencies most of the time. And where's the one championship? I don't know. DK Sportsbook, dude. DraftKings Sportsbook, I guess. I mean, they've they've done some work. They've gotten some connections, but I can't find the MMA stuff. Let me see, man. Let me look it up. All right, cycling. Blah blah blah. Where is this MMA, dude? I only see Bellator, EFL. Dude, they they say they have DraftKings. I see no DraftKings. I don't know. That's what they said. I don't think they really got it. 
I don't know. Who knows? DraftKings, I ain't using that sports book. It is what it is. That's weird, man. They say they have the connection to DraftKings, but I see no odds. Maybe it's only in Asia? I really have not a clue. I really have not a clue. Shinya Aoki making his way. If you don't know Shinya Aoki, you should. This guy is a submission killer. He's a legend in the game at this point. I mean, the guy is a G. The Bokken Judan. He's the master of flying submissions. Very dangerous on the ground. Very tricky jujitsu. He snapped limbs of people before. He doesn't care. This guy's a freak. He flick you off after he breaks your arm. He's insane. Shinya Aoki gets me excited. You can tell I'm excited. Anthony Smith. Who should Anthony Smith fight next? Honestly, we got a second. Let me answer that question. Because I have not a clue off the top of my head. UFC rankings. Let me pull it up, man. I'm going to tell you. Are you using the app or the website for betting on this fight? Mr. Uh, Mr. Keto. Alright, let's see what... The UFC rankings have Anthony Smith at before this fight start because now I'm curious who he should fight next. Uh, Anthony Smith beat Crute. Honestly, it might be Megomed and Kalayev. Yeah, I think he's probably gonna. That's that's a hard fight. I think if Ankalayev's available, Ankalayev might be fighting Uldzdemir though. I might be wrong on that. Where do you where you find the odds on the app? Because I only found the MMA odds for PFL or. Um, Bellator outside of UFC bets. Some crazy fights this weekend. Yiri Prohashka and Dominic Reyes. That's a serious matchup. If Yuri wins, he's very close to a title fight. Yo, what's up, pay per view Dizzle? How you doing, my brother? I would love, I would absolutely love uh, to see Yuri in a bigger fight, but I'll be honest, I picked Reyes, man. I think that he has the, the style. Damn, you look at Prohashka, that hand-down style can really get you in trouble. Yeah, I heard Cowboy versus Sanchez is off. It is what it is at this point. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what. Maybe something crazy. Can you imagine they do uh, Sanchez versus Nick Diaz for Nick Diaz's comeback fight? Because they did fight before, and Sanchez beat him back in the day, I think. Actually, like I'm sure that that happened. He beat him. Edward Faliang, former champion, making his way. This is the trilogy fight. The all sports list? Bro, I'm about to check right now. Because I did not see it, but I was looking under MMA only. So let me do that. Let me get DraftKings up. They really should, man. I think Diaz will destroy Diego Sanchez at this point. Let's be honest, Diego Sanchez has been out of his prime for some time now. Yeah, it's a lot of controversy, man. The fight game is all controversial. The, f the world is upside down, bro. Look at the fight game. It's upside down as well. Jake Paul has become a mainstream narrative. Did you watch Ariel Hawani's show? This guy's on it every week, it seems. Let's see if I can find the bets. Are you looking at live sports? I didn't even look. What's the UFC rankings? What's bad about them? What happened? Dude, Diego would not. I t Baby Yoda, I beyond agree with you on that one, dude. Beyond agree. I don't think that he beats Sabah Homasi. I don't think he beats it. Wiz Khalifa actually teamed up with PFL. Did you guys hear that? He's like, he's investing in them. If you're just tuning in, guys, smash the like button. We're looking for 10 likes. We want more, truly. And we want it before this fight starts. So, smash it. This fight here, Shinya Aoki, Edward Faliang. Our prediction here, Aoki submission, round one. That's my pick. Aoki is so good on the ground. It's fun to watch, man. It's very high-level stuff on the ground. It's extraordinary, to be 100% honest with you guys. He's on another level of, like, most MMA fighters. 
Smash the likes, bro. Listen to listen to our boy Baby Yoda in the comments, man. He's a wise Jedi. Oh, I can't find the bets right now, man. I don't know. It is what it is. I, I might just skip the bets here on this card. If you guys find an easy way to pull it up, let me know, and we'll throw something down. We'll do a live bet with you guys. Hey, what's up, Sydney? How you doing? Overall, the card is exciting. I'm pumped to see it. Uh, this fight right here is going to be absolute fire. You have Edward Foliang taking on Shinya Aoki. Cowboy's not a 15 guy, man. If I'm Cowboy, I'm so thankful because that's about to up his dinero. Bro, honestly, yeah, I am saving my money for PFL. I'm, I'm not going to waste money on this one fight. Like, nah. And if Sydney, if you're still in here, smash that like button if you haven't yet. Let's get, let's get, at least get me to 11. Robbie Lawler's still in the top. Dude, I don't know how that happens. That's the fight game, bro. That's literally the fight game. They, the, the, or the, the UFC ranking game. Like, it's just, it's name value at this point. Because the rankings are almost like a fallacy outside of the top, like, 13 for some, some leagues. I mean, or some uh, weight classes, you know, especially um, wel welterweight, lightweight. It's just weird, man. I don't know. See, Cowboy ranked weirds me out. There's higher level guys in that weight class that are unranked. All right, so both in the center of the cage at the moment. You have Aoki in that southpaw stance. You have his opponent here, Edward Faliang in the orthodox with the red trunks aoki you know his style he's looking for a takedown but he cannot leave those hands low he just got caught by a big hook by folly yang folly yang has a lot of power in his hands he's a very well-rounded guy but is on an absolute slump you look at him he's lost i believe his last two and neither of those guys are aoki level aoki's looking absolutely fire as of late three fight win streak i should honestly probably pull up the graphic for this fight because i got the wrong one up and i apologize about that guys both in the center of the octagon, Aoki in, uh, you know, more of a tie-ish style stance. He has the way, the way he leaves his hands out is tie-ish. But really, it's, it's an Aoki looking for closing distance and grappling style. That's the honest truth of this guy here. But the submission skills are so high level of Shinya Aoki. Extremely high level. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they cut Tyron Woodley. I was so disappointed they cut Tyron Woodley. I'll miss him. Shinya Aoki closes distance, goes for the takedown. He's really shooting hard for that takedown. No, Hamzat's still a fighter, my man. Hamzat's coming back. Shinya Aoki lands a takedown. Oyoki on top, this is it. Guys, trust me. Aoki, look, he's got him in the Dagestani leg lock here. He's moving towards full mounting him. Probably watch out for that arm triangle. Yeah, Woodley, the new owners weren't, weren't into Woodley, man. It is what it is. He's, he's, he's a lot of price, and he's not going to be a champion again is probably their mindset. Aoki right now is throwing some ground and pound from the top position while he has the legs completely trapped of Edward Foliang. Throwing some shots from that top position here. As of right now, Shinya Aoki, trolling on top, is on his way to a submission win. You look at their most recent fight, it looked a lot like this. Aoki can start passing towards full mound here. Obviously, he respects the game of Fali Yang, and he's going to take his time. But he's also, see that? Look, he's setting up the arm triangle. The left arm wrapping around, clasping hands with his right. He's going to slowly move up to full mound. He's going to then start applying shoulder pressure and then switch over and uh, may even potentially switch to side control to finish off the arm triangle. This might be another win by arm triangle for him. He's in the full mount completely now. This is terrible for Edward Foliang. This pretty much could be it. Elbow lands for Shinya Aoki. He moves so well on the ground. I think Shinya Aoki, at the rate that he's going, might be fighting for a title once again. I'm definitely interested in potentially seeing him taking on um, Eddie Alvarez in a trilogy because I believe they're one and one against one another. Down the line, I think that does happen in one. Controlling full mount is Aoki. His ground game looks very good. 
He looks as good as he really ever has. Yeah, definitely seems like different level here. Oof, vicious elbows by Aoki. Aoki is just beating up Folly Yang. Folly Yang beat him once. But that was in his prime. No longer is he there. I think Eddie should win, dude. I really think he should win. This is dominance. Is this a 10-8 round for the American scoring system? Definitely. Aoki's looking for a submission here. I think he might have it. I predicted first round submission. I would like to see a first round. He's got him. Done. First round submission. Done. Told you guys. First round submission. That's easy one. Easy one. Yeah, man. That was pretty good, man. That's why they don't let us do props. Yeah. Andre Arlovsky, dude, he's making so much money. Are you kidding me? He's blessed. He's blessed. One championship, Shinji Aoki dominates. As predicted, first round submission victory. I wish I could have done a prop, guys. I would have thrown on this one a good amount, and I would have absolutely delivered. Dude, I wish Cain Velasquez would come back. I really do. They're about to announce the winner. Shinji <laughs> Aoki, good performance, man. Wow. Do you think Shinji Aoki is a future one championship champ once again? I mean, he's a two-time champ already. I think that if Christian Lee fights him, one thing I will say about that fight... And it's something we have to know that could potentially hap happen there. If that fight touches the ground, anybody's in trouble. He did lose to Lee prior. I do want to go back and watch that fight. And I think that he's very close. Eddie Alvarez. If Eddie Alvarez loses, he gets the Shinya's fighting for the title. If he wins, it goes the other way, obviously. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. Starting it off well, man. I am a fan of one championship. You guys know I'm a fan of one. That's why I cover it all the time. But it uh, delivers. Let's be honest. One championship has very good fights. Like, I mean, even if there are a little bit of mismatches here, it makes it entertaining. Folly Yang lost. Shinya Yoki pulls it off. Folly Yang's talking right now. Disappointing. So. Aoki's such a savage on the ground. If TNT can keep these guys around, if we can just be full-time every Wednesday night, one championship events, I'd be so satisfied. I feel like one has a legit chance to be huge in the States. Like, a, maybe surpass Bellator. Because outside of the UFC, PFL... Bellator and one. I think they're all the three horsemen. I think Bellator is in the lead. I think PFL for the American fans is number two worldwide. I think it's one, but we'll see. I think one could overtake the American fan base over PFL, and I think it could take it over Bellator. I think one championship could become the second to the UFC. It could become the number two MMA league in the world. What they need to do is. Get the American audience more interested. There's so many fans here. 
that will start to, to, to get into it. I really believe so. But in Asia, they're huge and obviously superstars there. And I do love how, how that does exist. It's such a high level there. Excuse me. Shinya Aoki, what a win. What a win, Shinya. What a win for Shinya Aoki. I'm so satisfied, man. So satisfied. Shinya Aoki. Appreciate you guys for 15 likes. You guys are great. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Appreciate the likes. P. Diz, what's up, man? Shinya Aoki's talking right now. Let's see what he says. Yeah, they, they do short cards, but... They do a longer one. Maybe seven fights, eight fights. See what Shinya says. I'm very curious to hear his opinion. He is a monster. Shinya Oki have one of the scariest voices ever. Like, if you put that Jason mask on, he's like a straight killer. I mean, this guy is, is scary. Dude, this guy's voice is terrifying. No offense, Shinya. You're a, you're a savage, but your voice is scary, man. Sounds like a super villain. Damn. Yeah, Yoki's a crazy man. I wonder why his voice sounds like that. Genetics, maybe. Shinya Yoki has done very well for himself throughout his career, man. He's a long-time fighter. Very high level. Yeah, Aoki, man. Great win. How old is Aoki now? 37, almost 38. Yeah, P. Diz, you're actually totally right, dude. I think they have the potential to be like the new Pride FC. They just need to get, as I said, American audience. And then, yes, eight fights. The key is to have eight fights, I think. He's calling out somebody. I don't know what he's saying. He's calling out somebody. Jinya Yoki's a scary man. Oh my god. Do you hear this man's voice? If you guys are listening live, you know how scary he sounds. Look, like I'm listening to an axe murderer. Jinya Yoki called out Sage Northcutt. He's, he's going to tap into Sage. And he called out Yoshihiro Akiyama. Wow, okay. Yeah, he's he's a specimen on the ground. You know who beat his ass though? Ben Askren. Funky Ben is the real deal. Funky Ben. <laughs> Dude, Shinya Aoki's so great, man. And, and I really hope one continues with these events, man. They're gonna build a huge American fan base. I promise. His voice is crazy. Wow, Aoki, clap it up, Shinya, Shinya Aoki, craziest man in MMA, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't give Sage Northcutt Shinya. He's gonna get destroyed. All right. So the next fight on the card is actually gonna be the start of our main card. It's Rug Rug. That's going to be so fun. And dude, it's so many submissions for Aoki. The guy's the master. So excited for these cars, man. Dude, please, one championship. If, if one championship ever listens to this live stream, I really hope they continue with the American audience. We're huge fans here. They have so much potential to be huge. And I also love the idea of seeing five fight main cards Maybe three fight on their cards. Or even four fight main cards like a strike force. Hopefully they can get something done. Some type of deal. Because one championship is so good. As far as the fights, the entertainment value, and the production. The only thing is, of course, they have some kinks. But I think it's very good. They need a betting analyst. They know who to call. Call, call yours truly MMA experts right here. Because I would love the opportunity. I can't say better than Damian Maya, mainly for Aoki, uh, if they fought one another, the size difference. But, I mean, he definitely from the top position is very tricky.
Oh, yeah. Dude, to me, as far as elite level competition goes, I think it goes, depending on weight class. Right now, for lightweight division, it's definitely one championship. Um, Heavyweight division, outside of the UFC, the best, I think, is Bellator. Featherweight division, I think, is going to definitely be Bellator. Technically, Patricio Pipple is the champ in the lightweight division, but outside of Patricio, not as many huge names. And I'll be honest, Christian Lee could be a very tricky fight for Patricio at lightweight. Also, the bantamweight division, I like... I don't know. That's tricky, man. I don't know. Very tricky. They're talking about right now Shinya Aoki versus Yoshihiro Akiyama fighting. I'm taking Aoki. He's going to... He's going to beat him like he did Sakuraba. One championship is excellent stuff, man. Yeah, light heavyweight in Bellator, they have it locked. That's their league. And I think middleweight in Bellator, I don't know. I think Rainer DeRieter could potentially win against um, Gegard. Stylistically, it would look similar to when he fought um, Gracie. I believe Gracie. I can't even remember the name of the guy that beat him, man. Is that bad? I can't shoot. I don't know. I don't remember the name, but let me pull it up because now, now I want to find out. I want to check out. I want to give you guys, I, I want to do a video. And if you guys are interested, let me know. Uh, just a hypothetical video having who is the best in the weight classes, like combining all the champions, you know, outside of the UFC. Because I think there's some serious guys in every league that could be very high level. Yeah, Bellator has the bantamweight division. You're right. They do have the bantamweight division. I think they have it on lock. Sergio Pettis. There's some good guys. John Lineker, I think, probably the best bantamweight right now. I think he's so difficult to deal with. One championship has the weight rehydration thing that's different than all these other leagues. Very scary there. Agar Musasi. All right. He lost to Lovato Jr. He, what am I saying? Gracie. Lovato Jr. by a majority decision. I don't know. Gegard could potentially beat Dorita, but I could see him tap. I could see him I could see him in trouble. It's a hard fight. That's a very hard fight. Archulette is good, man. They think it's gonna be all hands. It's what Rich Franklin just said. Yeah, Lineker has stepped his game way up. I've become a huge Lineker fan since he's come over to one. I mean, I always liked Lineker, but like he's a straight killer now. I'm telling you, man, the rehydration clause being different, the way that you don't cut as much weight, it does him so many favors because he's fighting guys that are about his same size. You know, I think Lineker would not have been able to succeed in the UFC as much because of the weight classes. I'll be honest with you, I think he does better in one than he would in UFC. If he fights a UFC, if he fought, let's say he fought against a top bantamweight from the UFC in one, I'd lean Lineker. But in the UFC, I'd lean um, maybe like, you know, whoever the bantamweight would be. I think he would give a lot of problems to most. Right now, they're just looking at like a flashback video on this lead card live stream. I'm just watching because they're in the ring. I will say if there's one request I would like to make is I like the ring fights. I don't know why. I just, I prefer the ring for one championship. I think it just gives that pride feel. I think that would be huge with the American fan base. I really do. I think that OG fans will love it. New new school fans will love the nostalgia of it. I think it would be very good. I'm very much hoping that we see one championship return to TNT, but let's do it in a ring. That's my preference. I don't know why I prefer it. I think it's just nostalgia reasons, truly. Corey Sanhagen's a little bit, yeah, yeah. Corey Sanhagen's good. They had a split. Corey beat John by a split, split decision. You know, by a split decision, man. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, they, they did the right thing, picking the, the best guys they could. So right now, we're just in between fights. 
the next fight is going to be Rug Rug versus Umar Kane. So while we're just here chilling, I'm just going to give you guys my breakdown of the fight. We'll talk about what's going to happen. We'll go for a detailed predictions. I'm going to try to Mystic Mac pick these fights while we're just hanging out. So you guys give me your predictions in the live chat if you have any for this fight here. Rug Rug takes on Kirill Shinenkov. I believe Shinenkov. Let me pull up that thing. Kirill Grishenko. In this fight here, both are good wrestlers. If you look at Grishenko, he has a pretty good background. But I will say, Umar Kane got the hype behind him, the athleticism. He's a freak athlete. I think this fight is going to be mostly striking because uh, I will say the Senegalese wrestler will not go down easy. He's got a hell of a base. I think Umar Kane wins this fight by probably a TKO here. If Kirill goes out there and surprises us, that would be wild. Personally, not betting on one championship tonight, but we are enjoying the show. And one is definitely delivering and proving to be top-level content once again, I mean, the fights are super entertaining. I mean, I think you guys are very entertained. Sorry for uh, adjust. I'm just adjusting my screen here because I felt I looked a little bit too bright. There we go. Back. There we are. Fortunately, can't do these uh, live streams in Super HD because my camera, it times out after uh like 30 minutes so that's why you see me here on the the webcam if you're an og follower you know the webcam is how we started man so it's uh some og stuff yeah i think that ruguru is gonna knock him out one championship on tnt4 one has become my second favorite All right, game time. Appreciate the uh, kind hands, Miss Sydney Alexandra. We're about to get into the card. Hopefully soon. We have about five minutes, or actually no, take that back. We have about nine minutes until the event starts on TNT. The uh, stream here is just showing a replay of an old fight, and we're gonna see what happens on this card, man. I'm just actually pretty excited. Let's see. Next fight on the card. This fight definitely deserves some note here to talk about. Got to get into it. Eddie Alvarez. Ray Yoon. Pretty pumped for this fight. On. I think it's a good matchup. I think that Ray Yoon is not a guy to be underestimated. But he put on his back. We saw it against Marek Afarov just last week. I think we're going to see more of it against Eddie Alvarez. I'm going victory, Eddie Alvarez. I think he gets probably a decision here. If you're betting on it, good luck. Personally, I'm not throwing the dinero down. But if you are, God bless you. And I do wish you luck. But Eddie Alvarez has been way too spotty for me to want to throw money on him. I just don't want to, and I'm not going to. I thought about putting some money down later on, but we haven't. So right now, let's see what Chavalo and them are saying. They're previewing the card just as I am. I'm just excited to see the main event really more than anything. Let's talk about that. That's truly what we all want to see. I think Alvarez should win here, but honestly, he's looked spotty in one, so who really knows with him? But I can guarantee you this fight right here, you're going to see Rainer De Reeder, the now, as far as one championship goes. He's the guy who beat the Burmese Python in the last one. I think he beats him again here, and I think he does it by submission. This fight's now at 100, or rather, excuse me, at light heavyweight. I can't even tell you an exact weight because the weight classes in one are just very tricky. They don't make weigh-ins like a, as much of a big deal like MMA does in the States. I think that we are going to see Rainer De Reeder get the win by submission. I think in the second round, I think that Ang Leng and Sung will put on a better performance and have more resistance in the first. But ultimately, I think we're going to see De Reeder get another submission win here over Ang Leng and Sung. And that's the fight that I'm looking forward to the most on this entire card, to be 100% honest. Dude, thankfully, they overturned Eddie's fight. You got Ong? Dude, I'm happy you're picking Ong. I'm glad somebody here is picking Ong for the simple reason he deserves some love because he's a very good fighter. I think Rainer De Reeder is the now. Very impressed by him. But Ong could pull it off. Absolutely. I mean, this is no uh, no easy fight, no guarantee. 
you're just tuning in, smash that like button, guys. We're looking for 25 likes. We're sitting at 21 currently. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Ang Lee Sung, as far as striking goes, is a phenomenal striker. But when it goes to the ground, a guy like Rainer Dereeder poses serious threat to him. It's in the light heavyweight division. I think that might play into the game of Dereeder even more so. He might be stronger at 205 pounds. I think he's going to get the win here, guys. But at the end of the day, I got a fan. P. Diz, he's picking Ong Lang. So I got to give, give my boy some respect here. It's possible. Definitely possible. Ong Lang could win this fight, even though I do see the reader getting it done. I'm just ready to see this card begin. It's going to be fire. Absolutely. So far, I mean, how good is the lead card? How good is one championship? Like, I, I hate to be a fanboy of one, but I mean, how good are their events? I'm, I think they deliver. The fights always deliver. Even if it's some bad calls, I think, I mean, have you seen boring fights in one? I don't think one really has boring fights. They, they yellow card you if you're stalling. I love that. I think one for the fans of entertainment is very good. Very good. Very, very good. Twenty two likes, fellas. If you're watching, smash the like button. Smash the likes. Honestly, I'm so glad they overturned that bad bad call. That call was awful. Are you kidding me? That was by no means a disqualification all right right now weirdly enough Kirill Grishenko is walking to the cage I thought the fights didn't start for a while I don't know maybe they're just showcasing the fighters on the main card is Rug Rug yeah I think that's what they're doing okay they're just showcasing the fighters right now this really is the, the new age pride. One championship does it well. I hope, they, I hope they blow up, man. Really do. I wish one all the best. Ray Yunuk, man, goes from nobody to somebody in a matter of a few days. Seven days? Crazy. God bless him. Eddie Alvarez. Underground King is very good. But I think that... You'll be in trouble. I don't know. Thing is, the soccer kicks, man, the reason I'm going to disagree with you on this is because that could kill somebody, really. Soccer kicks are so ruthless. I like the knees and the elbows because you think of pride, they did not have elbows. So the happy medium is elbows and knees. That's what I like. But I will tell you, if they brought some Gracies, I do think that helps. They have such good jujitsu guys already, though. I think that there's a worldwide fan base for one just off if you're a fan of jiu-jitsu. I mean, they're going to have the best guy in the no-gi in there. I mean, they already have some good guys that are just jiu-jitsu masters. Mio Mars, Ong Lang Ang Sang. Yeah, bro. It's going to be uh, Rug Rug, win, knockout, round one. And then it's going to be Eddie Alvarez. I think he gets a win by decision. And then I see the victory for Rainer Reader by submission. Yeah, they need to bring keep the strikers coming. I feel like with one championship, I feel like they should try something crazy. I wonder just I would just want to see it once as like a sample, do boxing with MMA gloves. I'm just curious how that would look. All right, might be time for one championships event to be. One is trying though. I mean, they're on TNT, which is a huge opportunity. But the biggest issue just simply comes down to the fact that they are not consistently on American television. You know? um, if they were, I think that would help their game so much.
I need to log into one on TNT. Sorry for taking so long, guys. The event has not started yet. But should be a pretty good card when we get it started. Gonna be making their way to the cage. I would love to see that, man. If they could slowly move up and get with better network television, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm having some computer glitches here, which is why we're not talking about the fight. Give me two minutes, guys. Yeah, the UFC's done very well. All right. Loading it up now. Sorry about that, guys. Had to log into my account for. I, I honestly wish that all MMA leagues could just work through ESPN Plus. It would just be way easier. It's a constant pain in the ass having to freaking log into my cable provider for freaking TNT. <clears throat> Very excited we get to see these fights. All right, one on TNT4. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be doing full commentary for the entire card. We are on the main card now. Oh, and after this fight, guys, I will be doing the PFL... Um... PFL weigh-in recap, because I know you guys are interested probably in the PFL weigh-in recap. But I do apologize for it not releasing yet. I'll drop it after this. I'm probably going to do the weigh-in recap, and then I'm going to drop the one on TNT uh, post-fight card. If you guys are interested, we'll talk about matches to make, what I thought of the event. But yeah, the PFL weigh-in recap is coming after this stream, so stay tuned. I might even do it live. I don't know. Just let me know. If you guys want me to do it live, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll consider doing it live. Is ACGA on the sauce? Dude, I love how they have this guy here. Lang on song. Rug rug. Wait, is who on the sauce? ACJ, bro. I don't know if I'm having a brain fart. ACJ MMA. Let's see. Let's see who you talking about? I can't even. Wait, who who's on the sauce, bro? Just retype it, my man. Hey, thank you, pay per view Diz. I'll see. We might go live if if we get enough people wanting me to do the weigh in recap live. I'll literally do it right after. Oh, Antonio Carlos Jr., bro. When you said ACG, I was for some reason I thought you meant. Ong Lang and Sung and just messed up the, the freaking initials. Dude, I, I haven't I haven't done the uh weigh-in recap yet. I haven't even looked at the images myself. I I was out today. So I'm gonna after this, I'm gonna look through, we'll look through the uh the images from the weigh-ins and I'll give you guys my my predictions and whatnot. But yeah, let me know if you guys want it live. We can do it live, we'll interact with you guys in the comments. Um if you're interested in do in me doing it live, just let me know and I'll do the weigh-in recap live. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, shoe face. He probably is, though. I mean, as what were we talking about last week? How all these guys, they leave the UFC and they just suddenly look more jacked. Even Pettis. Even in the fact he got beat up, though. Man. Hey, bro, you're not going to miss Shoeface, though, because you'll see him on PFL. It's not like these guys are going away into oblivion anymore. I mean, if you're outside of the UFC, you're still getting opportunities to be televised to a large audience. As long as you have ESPN+, Plus, you can watch a ton. You want to see it live? Hey, pay-per-view, Diz, P-Diz, rather. You want to see it live? We'll probably do it live. If anybody else wants to see the weigh-in recap live, let me know 
in the live chat. I honestly low-key want to do it live just because it's, it's a different experience, you know, doing it live, you get the interaction and stuff, and I always enjoy it. So this fight, heavyweight division, Rug Rug, he takes on a very serious Ariel. Good wrestler, too. But you know we're picking Rug Rug in this fight here. Yeah, that fight wasn't great, but this is shoe face poses such a threat on the ground. You can't really let let the hands go too much because then next thing you know, it he puts you on your back and you're you're done. But he's he's gonna win. Tom Lawler, that that's like if that fight goes the distance, I don't think that it, that's a good look for shoe face. I think he should get a submission round one. Uma Ruk Rukane versus Karil Greshenko. Dude, I feel like if you put one championship on any network, what if they got a Paramount deal? Like how we used to have uh, the Paramount Network had Bellator. Any Lee, any, anything. Just I just want to see one consistently on American television. We're all fans. I think that there's a huge fan base potential. They need consistently advertise. Truly, I think they just need to get through to a certain demographic with hardcore fans... They like these crazy walkouts. They like these events. Bring super fights, sign guys. One on Fox would be insane. If they get a deal with Fox, they will, I promise you, they will probably be on the road to becoming the number two MMA league on the planet, especially in the United States. Right now, Bellator locked it up with Showtime, but Fox or Showtime, that's very, very competitive. I think they need to get with Fox. That would be huge. One championship would emerge as very mainstream. I like seeing other leagues outside of the UFC getting some respect just simply because you know, there's other opportunities. If you don't like what the UFC is offering, you can go elsewhere. Grishenko is not coming here to lose. Like, you guys need to know, this is no opponent. This guy's 3-0. He has a good wrestling background. I don't think he is going to have that physical strength that Rug Rug has, but still is a notable opponent and a very stern test. Stylistically, a harder matchup than Allen and Galani, I feel like. Yeah, 3-0. and I mean, there's not much to note about him. I, I watched some footage of him. Quick quick KO. He takes guys down. He'll beat them up, submit them. That's it. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. I'll just lean back a bit here. We got a good fight. Starting it off. Rug Rug versus Kirill Krishenchenko. I want to say this guy's last name. I'm looking at tape. Grishenko. Grishenko. Grishil Grishenko. Making his way to the cage now. It is Rug Rug Umar Kane. Should be a good fight here. Excited to see what happens between these two. Rug Rug. Rug, Rug, Rug is intense, guys. This guy looks intense. Jacked. Senegal. An African lion here. Huge opportunity right now. He's looking like their next heavyweight prospect, but... One thing to note about one championship is they don't bring in a very legit heavyweight division. Brandon Vera, I think, is currently the champion. And I feel like Ru Rug would be a tricky fight for him with that size advantage. Naturally much heavier. Knockout round one for Ru Rug is a realistic outcome here. Probably overwhelm Kreshenko. Yeah, you need Eddie for the knockout, bro. I think Eddie can deliver on the knockout. Could happen. So he was undefeated in Senegalese wrestling and he was undefeated in MMA. Wow, so Sen in Senegal, this wrestling is no joke. They sell out arenas. Like, this is huge there. It's their national sport. That's very cool. This guy's an undefeated champ there. His wrestling is very good. It's a serious fight, man. Very serious. Rug 
wrestler versus wrestler. Definitely different styles of wrestling to know. Very different style. Kirill Grishenko. Both guys about 6'4". All guys. Big boys. You guys are huge. Dang. I think that we're going to see Rube Rube knock this guy out. But if he pulls off the upset, that would be huge. And I feel like Rube Rube is going to beat him up. Very cool to represent Senegal. Such a huge stage as, you know, a championship wrestler. It's an awesome opportunity. See, I don't know if you guys had seen uh, when Francis went back to Cameroon. It was crazy. That's got to be so cool. He's like a national hero there. He's got more power than the president there. He's somebody huge. Very amazing to see. Very inspirational as Francis Ngannou. Rug Rug. Good fight here. Kirill Greshenko. You look at them next to each other. The heights are listed at 6'4", but it looks like a clear 2-inch height advantage for Greshenko here, which that might actually play into the advantage of Rug Rug. Just simply the overhand will be there a bit more. And if you look, I mean, now if Greshenko is on a look to go get at the legs with double legs or any type of takedowns that are, you know, not Greco-Roman style body locks and whatnot, it's going to be difficult against a shorter opponent especially with the base i mean look at the legs on look at the legs on Ru. he's a monster right now patient start by both groshenko moving forward throwing some kickboxing style strikes they clinch up and groshenko has the right underhook and defending well i mean he is a high level wrestler and i don't think that ruguru can go out there and just underestimate him if Groshenko does win here, that would be a massive upset. Ruguru looking for the takedown here. Big knee to the body by uh, Groshenko in the clinch. Yeah, Groshenko is defending very well against Ruguru's trip-heavy attack from the clinch, but for how long? Right now, Grishenko has Rug Rug up against the cage, but Rug Rug shakes it off. It, a very different style is this Senegalese wrestling. I mean, look how low he gets. Uh, it's, it's a very different mindset than the you know typical American style wrestling, like folk style, or you know more of the the international styles, you know freestyle, Greco-Roman, what have you. Rug Rug is a very interesting style. Right now, I mean, Ruguru could be in some trouble here. Yeah, he looks a little bit like Chukwi. Grishenko is landing knees to the body. Ruguru could be in trouble here. If Grishenko does win this fight, I would not be absolutely shocked because I know he has a legit wrestling background. But I think as far as knockout power, Ruguru should have the advantage. I think sitting here and eating body shots and knees to the body in the clinch is the worst thing for him. I think he's... Probably got a decent enough striking game to hurt Grishenko, but we'll see. I mean, maybe Rugru doesn't feel confident in his striking in this fight. I don't know. Ooh, that was a good shake off by Grishenko, but Rugru back on the arms. Definitely kind of like Grishenko looked a little frustrated, like towards the ref, like, hey, stalling which i mean at the end of the day it's not like rug rug is doing much he's eating knees to the body he looks in trouble here rug rug could lose this fight gave him a warning here no more grabbing the shorts okay i thought he was saying that you can't clinch anymore as of right now umar kane looks sloppy on the feet grishango closing distance i don't know guys if we're talking about right now who looks better i I don't know. Grishenko maybe does. Um, obviously, I want to see Rug Rug pull it off. I'm a fan. He's an exciting guy. 
But at the end of the day, Groshanko, technical, good wrestling background, he could definitely pull off the upset here, and that would kill the momentum of Ruru. But it also shows the level. Oh, big head kick. Big, big uppercut. Big knee to the body. Ruru is in trouble in this fight. I knew Grishenko was a tougher test than on paper, but I thought Ruru might be a little higher level than he was. But as of right now, Grishenko looks like the better fighter of the two. And he looks like he's en route to victory here. Rug stand up. He doesn't seem to have a very versatile game. It's kind of blitz with the hands or nothing, which against a guy that has some obvious technical kickboxing abilities, that's not going to work well. I mean, obviously you can land a punch, but very unlikely to just close distance and swing wildly and find success. Rug Rug has become a fan favorite and one is hyping him up, but they gave him no favors with this matchup here against Grishenko, who's winning this round clearly as of right now. Grishenko looks very good. But this is really going to show the character of Rug Rug. If in the next round he can come out there and put it on Grishenko, it's definitely going to pump his stock up. Okay, he can return from some adversity, which this is a stern test and it's needed for fighters. But as of right now, it doesn't look to be going the way of Grishenko. He's a bootleg Derek Lewis. That's funny. He doesn't seem to have that same punching power as Derek Lewis. He hits hard, but he's more explosive. He's not. He doesn't have just the freak power that you see with a guy like Derek Lewis. At least not yet, from what I've seen. Rook Rook did land a takedown at the very end, and then he's moving on to mount. Looks like he's ready to pound them out. Okay, interesting, interesting. If Rug Rug gets to get in, he'll get the takedown. But if he does not, I think on the kickboxing range, we're going to see him get picked apart even more so. It's going to look similar to what we've seen throughout. As of right now, Grishenko, the better kickboxer, clearly has the advantage. Won that round, in my opinion. On the American scoring system, it would be a 10-9. In Asia, he's winning the fight right now over at one championship. You know, as they score the fights as holes, it does change the scoring. If Rug Rug can go out here and have a big round, he could win the fight. Definitely was saved by the bell because Rug Rug did land a beautiful takedown. We'll see what happens in the next round. If you're just tuning in, guys, smash the like button. We're looking for 25. We're currently at 22. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Rug Rug. Versus Kirill Grishenko. A lot is expected of Rug Rug. Not a lot from his opponent. And the fight is right now leaning in the favor of Grishenko. At least to me. Kirill Grishenko moving forward. Ooh, Rug Rug throws a very nice head kick, but misses. Grishenko has a bit of the range advantage for sure. He's moving forward. Rug Rug gets out of the position. Rug Rug throwing big power now. He's throwing big overhands. I think in the boxing range, Rug Rug could really hurt Grishenko, but he needs to get inside and not just clinch up. He needs to actually look for big strikes here. Yeah, Derek Lewis is a one-punch touch guy, bro. One punch, one touch guy. That's his thing. I will say, I think he takes fighting a lot more seriously than he used to, but I don't think he trains the same as other fighters. But that's just what works for Derek, man. I think he his body works well with what he's doing. And I mean, he's had a great resurgence of his career. Three straight wins. Umar Khan does have power in that right hand. I think he could get the knockout of Grishenko. But as I said, in boxing range, Grishenko moving forward uh, is the better of the two in that kickboxing range. Spinning back kick attempt there. Oof. Grishenko look for something big. Rug Rug now has the body lock against the cage. But I don't know if we'll see... Umar Kane be able to land the takedown here. Rug Rug pushing the pressure on Umar Kane, pushing it on Grishenko against the cage here. Your Grishenko, get your back off against the cage, and I think maybe look for some strikes from kickboxing range, but. Rug Rug 
could always land. He has very big, big power. Yeah, betting on a Derek Lewis fight is unless you bet on him, it's how to lose your money. I mean, dude, I thought Curtis Blades would be a near lock in that fight, and Curtis Blades got slept. A lot of pressure by Ruru. I wonder how they're going to score this fight because even though Ruru may be winning this round, he's really doing nothing. It's a very odd fight. This is not a great performance by Ruru, win, lose, or draw. He's just pushing pressure and holding here. Roshenko, yeah, that's something I forgot to mention. He's a Greco-Roman wrestler. So in these body lock positions, even though, you know, Rugru is excellent with Senegalese wrestling, you got to respect the Greco-Roman in the inside of the clinch. That's very difficult to deal with. So Umar Kane has landed some good strikes in this round. Nothing extremely well to note, but he has landed. As of right now, Roshenko moving forward. This is the first second round of Umar Kain, a.k.a. Rug Rug's entire career. I think he's winning this second round, but he definitely lost the first. Big leg kick there by Umar Kain. Overhand attempt, or rather Superman punch attempt by Grishenko. And now Rug Rug has Grishenko's back up against the cage. They get in just weird positions here where not much is happening. And the honest truth is the fights are not in one championship scored in the favor of the guy stalling, holding against the cage. You look at Marek Afarov versus Ray Yunuk. Ray Yunuk got that fight by a decision. Umar Kane may lose this fight on the judges' scorecards here. He needs to look towards a finish here, in my opinion. Big body shots there by Grishenko. Grishenko throwing the body shots. Umar Kane is not doing anything. I mean, who's winning in this clinch exchange? In the UFC, I'd say they'd give it to Rug Rug. But in one championship right now, it might be Umar. It might be uh, Grishenko. He's landing more strikes than Umar Kane. Body shots there. Knee to the body. The score in the fight is an overall match. Another thing we got to note. Umar Kane's doing nothing holding here. I think right now. Still. Roshanko's winning the fight. Roshanko's going to win this fight I think. Yeah, Umar Kane's done. He took a shot at the bell and just laid down. Yeah, Umar Kane may lose himself a serious amount of fan base and respect. That was not a knockout punch. I don't think so. You got punched in the face, bro. Don't lay on the ground like this. This is When I see fighters do that, I say, you want to ever be a champion, that's not what you can do. Let's see. I need to see how hard this punch was. I might be wrong. Totally missed. Totally missed. Rug Rug lays down. He's totally lost me. That's it. Done. He's a bum. He's a bum, bro. And Grishenko just won this fight. If they give him a DQ somehow, bro, worse than Romanov. Joke. Absolute joke when fighters do this. This is never a good look. Rug Rug, the world is watching on TNT right now, and you are laying on the floor after not getting touched. That is how you lose a serious fan base. That is how you lose all respect. You will never find yourself getting big fights if you do things like this. Because once it happens, it's a downhill slope. Absolute shame. Absolute shame. Disgrace. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Oh, he punched me in the chin. Dude, at least if he would have pretended because it more landed in the throat. Come on. He wants out. He's not a fighter, guys. I'm sorry. And I hate to say this to professional fighters, but if you don't want it 
and you're in there laying down like this, you're not built to be a world champ. Maybe he's really hurt, and I hope that I'm wrong, but normally when fighters do this, it's one thing if you got need in the face. Like, Al Jermaine, I'll give him the respect he wanted out. He was going to lose the fight. He did the smart thing. But Rug Rug here, not at the championship level at all, and laying down like this, absolute shame. He's going to lose fans. He's going to lose the respect of one championship. And that's it. That's the fight. That's a joke. That's Kirill. Give him the, the win. He won that fight. That's terrible. Ruguru just laid down. That's a joke, man. How to lose fans 101, how to lose pretty much any faith in your championship career. There's, that's terrible. Group group just lit. Come on. I don't know about that one, ladies and gentlemen. That looks like a fake. I have no idea what they're going to do. Ah, I feel so bad if one gets another no contest or DQ. Let's see how they score. Good. Good. Wow, Rugru laid down, ladies and gentlemen. His career <laughs> stinker. I hate to call out fighters like this, but it was an absolute shame what he just did laying down like that. It's an absolute disgrace. He's getting taken on this. I think, I don't believe this. I don't believe this. I think if you're good at grappling, you can beat Rugru. I mean, he got a lot of hype for beating Alan and Galani. Bro, his record is losing. He's like four and six, right? I don't fall into that. I, I had a feeling Rug Rug was going to be overrated, but there wasn't enough footage on Kirill uh, to really give me any hope. And from what I saw, I thought he could just be like a stiff wrestler. But no, he actually has a good kickboxing game. Kirill Groshenko put it on Rug Rug, embarrassed Rug Rug. And I think Rug Rug, his stock just went to absolute shit after laying down like that. It's over, guys. Like, that's how you, that's how you lose all fans. It's not something you can do just laying down like that. See a lot of guys doing it in, in one. I don't understand it. You saw Eddie Alvarez and Yuri. I don't know. I, I don't think that's good at all for the sport. I was ready to see Ok Rayun versus Eddie Alvarez, but I'm actually pretty disgusted by Ruguru quitting here. I, I I don't hope that he's injured, but I hope that he's not faking it because if he is, that's a disgrace to the fight game. I don't understand that at all. It's crazy, man. Uh, I don't understand what Ruby can. <clears throat> I don't know. That's irritating, guys. Just got to sit back for a second because that pisses me off. I don't like when fights end like that. It's just shit. It's not BMF shit. That's why, that's why Masvidal has such a big fan base. Uh, they're showing some highlights. Dude, that was a joke, bro. I don't care about Rug Rug losing. I'll take the L Rug Rug losing. I hate the fact that the guy literally quit on us. Like, come on. Yeah, that was Ra Rashkov. Yeah, I. but the thing is with Rashkov, I'll give him some respect. He quit. Rug Rug is like playing it off like he got hit after the bell and he goes down. Like, at least... I give more respect to Roshkov saying, hey, listen, I'm done. I quit. I res if you, res you really would have said, listen, I'm done. I quit. I'm done. That's over. Okay. But the fact that you fake it is a joke to me.
Dude, don't don't give up on one, man. They just, you know what it is? They they were trying to sell a narrative of Rug Rug, and even I fell into the trap. I thought he was a little better. Well, you're talking about the the Rug Rug fight, Marlo. I don't know, man. Did you see the replay? That shot was at the bell, and it grazed. Like, if you're fighting, you're going for the win. I think he was like, listen, I, I might be done. And even if your throat hurts, I mean, Muhammad Ali was known for fighting with a broken jaw for many rounds, man. Yeah, I, I think you you can't take away the great work from Grishenko. I always have felt if the fight is declared finished before the end, and it's at least a round and a half past, I believe you should score it on the fight you've seen. So they just scored it on the fight they saw. And they gave it to uh, Grishenko. Or actually, no, they called it a TKO. I would have just, I would have just called it. If it was me personally, I would have probably said that that's a technical decision win for Grishenko. If he's claiming there was like some type of strike, I don't know. But actually, take that back. That can't be because then it would be. I mean, accidental illegal strike. That was technically a legal punch because the ref hadn't broken yet. It's a TKO. I know they they should always use replay. I don't understand. It's like it's in 2021. Thankfully, the UFC's gotten more into the replay thing, so that's good. But like, you can't just go off the eyes all the time. Call the timeout and give the proper call. It's funny Brandon Vera is the heavyweight champ over there, and I'm not trying to shit on Vera. He's a hell of a dude, but it just blows my mind that he's the heavyweight champion. Ong Lang Ong Sung beat him as well, who's the middleweight champion. Very interesting, very interesting. It might be overturned. It definitely could be. One championship is talking about uh, we are one. I, I love one because they're all about bringing everybody together. And that's why I have to support one because what their goal was is to be pure martial arts, you know, and I, I have to give the respect. But that really hurt the stock of Rug Rug. My God. That hurt the stock. Who'd you, Marlo, who'd you have parlayed with Rug Rug, man? Yeah, the Eddie one was. Yeah. Honestly, that's the, the biggest issue. But, like, it just blows my mind. Like, yeah, it's just weird. Very weird. All right. Eddie and Aoki is a good fight. I don't like the no contest. Yeah, it's tricky, man. I just, I don't like, like, it's just weird to see fighters quitting like that. You don't see it often uh, in the UFC level. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. See? Sorry for uh, zoning in here to one. We're waiting for the next fight. It's going to be an interesting card. Yeah, I, I hate that he quit Robot Chicken Wings. I hate that, man. It's still going to be an awesome card. Thankfully, we have two awesome fights left. But wow, what a letdown was Rug Rug. It's a bad moment. It's a bad moment for his entire career. Like that's, trust me, that's going to haunt him. Exciting fight here. Eddie Alvarez versus Rey Yunuk. I'm ready for this fight, guys. That's the f This is the fight I'm waiting for. Right. 
That punch didn't land, bro. That's the biggest thing. Like, I don't understand what you think you're going to gain from that. Any fighter in any combat sport that does that, I immediately lose interest in him. Wait, who's a near lock? Bular? No, I don't think Bular is in, a, in that fight. I think Michalita should beat him. Right, Eddie Alvarez about to be up next. This is what we're excited for, guys. We came for this. Let's not let Rude Rude's embarrassing moment keep us down. Let's get hype on this next fight. Okrayun. Okrayun takes on. Very serious test there. He gets a huge opportunity against Eddie Alvarez. Marla, you like KB Bular, man? What do you, how do you think he beats Michelitis? What do you think? <clears throat> Woo! Oh, very good fight here. I'm very excited for this one. This is what we came for, is these fights here. Big fights, these real moments. This huge moment for the game here. Ah, appreciate everybody tuning in. Smash the likes if you haven't. Good fight so far. Disappointing Rogue Rogue moment. Let's see. Oh, you don't like him? Yeah, I don't like uh, Bular personally to win. Yeah, Bular, man. I think that's not a good matchup. He's gonna get beat up. Definitely gonna struggle in that fight. The underground king, Eddie Alvarez, making his way to the cage at the moment. Yeah, exactly. He got dropped by a jab. Michelitis has enough power in his overhand to put him down. And if you look at the style of Bular, it looks like he's still doing Taekwondo. The hands are extremely low, man. The underground king, Eddie Alvarez. If you're not rooting for Eddie Alvarez, I don't know what you're doing. Eddie Alvarez is the man. I love Eddie. He always comes to fight, win, lose, or draw. Bad moments here in one, but he looks for victory here. Ray Unuk is not going to lay down. This is no easy fight. He's a live underdog, but I still think Eddie Alvarez gets it done here. Talking about Bitcoin on the live stream. How crazy is that? One championship shouting out Bitcoin? Buy some Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> Guys, in the comments, after this video, I'm thinking about going live. Do you want to see PFL weigh in recap live? I can upload it, but it's gonna, you know, obviously take at least an hour, hour and a half extra, but it will be, you know, the pre-recorded normal format. Or should I go live? You guys can tune in, listen. As I go, like the video as I go. Let me know in the live chat if anybody's interested in live. I know we got one guy, uh, pay-per-view Dizzle, who said, yo, bring it on. I want to see it live. If anybody else is, let me know. Because I want to know if I'll be able to get some viewers in there that will stick around. Uh, don't want to do it to, uh, you know, an empty show. Eddie looking for a huge opportunity here. High-level MMA. South Korea versus America. Rayun Uk takes on Yelvarin. How do you guys like the one championship announcer? Personally, I think it's pretty fun. I like his style. It's like, reminds me of, reminds me of like an anime type thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think that fight does go the distance. <laughs> Any means. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, guys. Choking over here. <clears throat> All right. Holy fuck. Eddie Alvarez. 
One last cough. <coughs> All right, we're good. Game time now. You'll watch live, bro? I'll do it live. <coughs> if I know if some people are interested, we'll, we'll do it live. Apologize for choking up on camera here. <coughs> But yeah, we'll do a live stream, man. Eddie Alvarez being introduced right now. Should be an excellent fight here. High level stuff. Winner fights for the title. Maybe. I will say, asterisk, if Ray Yunuk wins, I think he needs one more. And I think maybe Shinya gets a title shot. But maybe they don't want to give it to Shinya in a rematch. We'll see. Ray Yunuk's a tall motherfucker. Look at that guy. Power is over him, man. He's got the reach advantage, height advantage. We'll see. We will see what happens in this fight because I'll be honest, I pick Eddie Alvarez, but Ray Yunu could surprise us all. Something to note, very good from kickboxing range. Let's start this fight off. We're doing play-by-play -play of this entire fight. I'll probably be looking at the screen for most of it. Here we go. They touch gloves. Red tape for Eddie. The blue tape for Oak. Both in the center of the octagon, you can feel a lot of the tension in there. They're going to start mixing it up. Eddie Alvarez is going to look for big shots, as he always does. Outside leg kick there by Eddie Alvarez. Good head movement by Eddie Alvarez. Ook looking for the range. I get very nervous when Alvarez is on the outside, because I feel like Ook has some pretty good kicks. Eddie Alvarez should look to get in that boxing range, man. Because from outside, I feel like Ook could potentially pick him apart. He has a very good... Uh, kickboxing base and it's a very tricky fight you can already see for Eddie Eddie shoots for the single leg gets his back up against the cage huge elbow that might be it nope 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 that was an early call but I was like hey who knows Ook is very resilient as far as takedowns go Eddie Alvarez has to explode into it Ook is takedown defense is good you look at the fight that he did uh with Marek Gafarov a high level grappler Gafarov had a very difficult time getting him down I did expect this from Eddie, though, because from kickboxing range, this guy's hell to deal with. I expected him to close distance. I expected him to be holding. This might look a lot like Pettis versus Alvarez here. Luke is very difficult to deal with as far as his grappling defense. I mean, man, he has good resiliency. He's explosive. Luke just keeps fighting. I got to give that respect to this man. No, he beat uh, Marak Afarov last week. Ray Yunuk is very tricky to deal with. And if he wins this fight, huge opportunity. Funny enough, he's ranked better than Eddie Alvarez. But obviously, Alvarez um, has the name value. Alvarez has Uk up against the cage. Alvarez did land the left hand. But nothing significant right now. I feel Uk has landed the better strikes, even though Alvarez does have him in what would be considered somewhat of a dominant position. If I'm Eddie Alvarez, I'm like, man, this guy's legit. Because the takedown defense is real. Eddie has some pretty good offensive wrestling. Uh, Ray Yunuk's takedown is very good. Very tricky fight. Here's the thing, Marlo. If you look at that fight versus Gafarov, he was very effective in the kickboxing range. And he defended takedowns well. You look at Alvarez, his style. I mean, more of a brawler. Good with the grappling. But definitely wouldn't say he's as level as the specialist Gafarov, but he does land a takedown and now is full mount, but no, back up. I will say something. Gafarov is a lot slower than he Alvarez with his shots. That's why Alvarez, I think, is going to be able to get off more takedowns, but can he stay on top of this kid? This kid is very difficult to deal with. Gafarov, as you said, you felt that he won the fight. I could see how you felt Gafarov won. You look, I mean, in that first round, back control. And the reason that Gafarov probably lost that fight would be more so the way that they judge in one championship is less about the grappling position if you're not in a dominant grappling position more about the offensive technique that's something to note the judging is not the same as the american judging jab mixing it up both of them going at it from the outside i worry about alk landing a right hand on alvarez's chin because he tends to drop that left hand a bit just watch that left hand as he comes in is there and i feel like ook is gonna hurt him ook just hurt him and he may hurt him again eddie alvarez needs to keep those hands up he's getting kicked he's getting cracked ray yunuk from kickboxing range is a very stern test and alvarez is done ray yunuk just knocked him out ray yunuk is the real deal trust me guys i think that's it eddie alvarez is finished his career might be finished as well 
Can he survive here? He's in big trouble. Uk is unloading shots from the top position. This is huge. Rayun Uk, somehow, Eddie Alvarez is still awake and in this fight. Eddie Alvarez, if he can come back somehow, I'd be shocked. He might be out. Uk is landing massive shots from the full guard position. Hammer fist, straights to the head, body shots. Eddie Alvarez somehow is awake. I have no idea how. I have no idea how Eddie Alvarez is even in this fight. He's He's in big trouble right now. This might be over. If he gets caught with a straight shot from full guard, I think he's going out. Somehow he's still in this fight. This is crazy. Ray Unuk is looking amazing right now. I think Ray Unuk is a serious striker. Eddie Alvarez is in big trouble. He's looking on shaky legs. Ray Unuk is looking fantastic. Alvarez has 15 seconds. Alvarez lands a left hook. Oh my God, this fight is fantastic. Eddie Alvarez, the underground king, is living up to the nickname. He's somehow still in this fight. He was badly hurt. I thought the fight was over. I was convinced they were going to call it. This is crazy right now. Oh my God, big right hand by Eddie Alvarez to finish the round. Holy fuck, this is a crazy fight. Ray Unuk's winning right now. That's all I'm saying. Ray Yunuk won that round. He's winning the fight. That was insane. I'm losing my mind over here watching this fight. Dude, right? Somehow Eddie Alvarez didn't go to sleep. It shows how hard Conor McGregor punches because he was dropping Eddie with like any shot he landed. And Eddie somehow came back to life here. But you know what? In the States, I think they might have stopped that fight. They stop it a little later, it seems like, in one here. I mean, I don't know. One championship is insane. You can think you have a lock. No, no, no. That's why I said I would not bet on Eddie Alvarez. I said it earlier in the show. I'd be shitting my pants betting on Alvarez. This old kid is the real deal. This is high-level refing, man. It's because I think they go with the mindset of give the fighter the chance a bit more. Because one goes for the real marshals. Let them, I think they'll let a guy take an extra shot. Rather than stop it a second earlier. That's what I've seen of one so far. Because I think in the States, Herb Dean would have stopped that fight. I think Herb would have stopped that fight. Eddie Alvarez is still in it somehow. And Ray Unuk definitely winning. Alvarez moving with a nice jab. If you notice, I called the straight shot was going to land on Alvarez's chin. He leaves the lead hand a bit low. He needs to be very careful in this round here. Ray Yunuk is looking fantastic right now. Ray Yunuk is landing elbows to the head. He is a difficult fighter to deal with. I think that Eddie Alvarez, his percentage of winning has dropped substantially here. Ray Yunuk has shown to have good stamina resisting takedowns. I mean, you look at the fight against Gafarov. He had good moments in that third round. As a striker, Uk is very tricky. And Eddie Alvarez felt that. Yeah, I, I don't think Eddie's best game is grappling with this kid. He's He hasn't landed a takedown yet. And it, but the problem is Eddie Alvarez is struggling to close distance without then clinching. He's having a lot of trouble with this kid striking. I mean, the kickboxing of Ray Yunuk has proven to be very high level and substantially better than I'd say most people predicted here. Eddie might be finished here. Jab there by Uk lands beautifully, and Uk is now moving, circling to the right. I think he's circling to the right, looking for that straight shot. I gotta say, Ray Unuk has a very schooled amount of skill with the striking. I mean, I'm impressed by him. Big takedown there by Eddie, but ultimately, Ray Unuk is just able to get back up to his feet that the takedown is a waste. You put in all this effort, you get him down, and he bounces right back. That's not the best way to win. That's not. I think Eddie Alvarez has to throw some strikes from this clinch position. He's looking for an Usman Masvidal style of attack. This is not what you come to expect from Eddie Alvarez, but I think it's because he knows he's in for a real test from kickboxing range. This kid has very legitimate high-level kickboxing skills. Six feet tall as well. I think that this kid's a problem right now if he can defend the takedowns. Yeah, Eddie Alvarez is always flying in planes. Head kick attempt there by Uk. Take down there by Eddie Alvarez. I think if you're fighting on a regular basis in Asia, you should probably just commit to training there. 
I think you should move there. I think if you want to succeed in the Asian leagues, you have to live in Asia. I don't know why. I just I, I just feel it could, it could really be a big, big help. I don't know. Maybe at least for the Americans. The Brazilians seem to have less of a struggle, but they live in a struggle more. Like Eddie Alvarez um, coming in here, you know, he's not living in the flavelas of Brazil. I mean, he's living in, in the United States. Yeah, they definitely do. The weight cut. The weight cut rule is quite odd. I would I would just I would just accept it at this point, but I do think Eddie Alvarez would be more comfortable in a weight class slightly lighter than this, maybe, because Hook is very big. John Lineker, though, looks amazing with those weight cuts. He looks so jacked too. Have you guys seen him? If you watched last week, he looked insane. I feel like I was just calling that fight a day ago. Like that flew by that whole week. Amazing fights last week. Best, best card ever for the UFC. Ray Yunuk is looking a bit tired. That's something we got to note. Eddie Alvarez, if he's able to come back and win, I mean, it just really solidifies underground king. Like, Eddie Alvarez is an absolute dog. He's fighting on the biggest stage in the world, but he's in a real fight. It's a war when you're in there, especially with a guy like Eddie Alvarez. This is history for him. I mean, this is... Right now, it's the difference between fighting for a world title and pretty much your run being over. If he loses this fight, it's done. I don't think he'll ever fight for the one world title. I mean, unless he goes on like a two-fight win streak where they just gift it to him because lack of opponents, which could be possible. If Eddie Alvarez can close distance and land some strikes from boxing range, he could win this fight. But right now, Ook from the outside just has an advantage. He controls range so well. Ooh, head kick by Eddie Alvarez. And then a take down attempt. That was huge. What a fight right now. Eddie Alvarez is winning the second round most definitely. How crazy is that? Eddie Alvarez survives. Very durable. Very durable. Okra Yuna looks so tired. My pick is sh shifting Alvarez. I, I think Alvarez can somehow pull this off. I think he can still win. Somehow, some way, Eddie Alvarez is the man. Yeah, right? Eddie Alvarez is tough as they come, man. He is he's a savage. If he doesn't get knocked out, he wins, man. Like, you look at the fight. Every fight he's been in, one championship, he's been stunned. Timothy Natsukin destroyed him. Look at the next fight. Edward Foliang drops him with a leg kick, and he comes back and wins. Right now. He's dropped against Ok Rayun. The only fight he didn't was the Yuri Lapagus fight. That's the one fight he was able to get him down and looked on his way to like an early TKO. Let's see what happens here. This fight's crazy. Yeah, he definitely is. Ok looks very tired. All right, let's see what happens, guys. This is the final round. Right now, it's one-to-one, -one, but I think the more dynamic moment definitely goes for Ook. So on the scorecards in one championship, Ook is winning this fight, I think. I think that's how they score. They score it as a whole, so I'm going to start scoring it as I assume they do. But in the American fighting system, that first round might have been a 10-8. Depends on the judge. And the second round, 10-9. So I don't know. Very tricky uh, how they'll score this fight. I don't know. Eddie Alvarez swinging for big shots, shoots on a single leg, looks to get it. He lands a strike on Oon. The thing is, Ook just has iron hips. I mean, you can't really get this guy down. Like, you'll get him down for a moment, and he'll get a huge overhand attempt by Eddie Alvarez. If he can sit in the boxing range, when Ook comes inside, there is an opportunity for an overhand shot. As he circles, as he as Ook circles left, Eddie Alvarez needs to commit to a potential overhand, but he needs to keep the left hand up. He drops that fucking, he drops that left hook every time. He drops that left hand, and now Eddie Alvarez just got elbowed in the head. He could be in trouble. Those elbows get me nervous. Alvarez right now. Now, now they're separated again, uh, away from the fence. Left hook by Eddie Alvarez. Head kick there by Ook. From range, Ook has a very serious edge. Eddie Alvarez needs to get close. He needs to get in boxing range. Big takedown by Eddie Alvarez there, but Ook is just popping right back up time and time again. You would agree. Yeah, first round was 
Right now, this is such a strange fight. Because Ook was clearly winning the first. And Eddie having some moments here in the second and the third now. But we'll see. They still have three minutes. And I think that this is still potential for action. Ook lands a right again. That right, I'm telling you, Eddie Alvarez's left hand comes down so often. I think that Ook could still knock him out as Eddie closes distance. If he kept that left hook, or rather that left hand, a bit higher, he would then be at le less risk of the straight from Ook here. And then next thing you know, it, he'd be able to land that overhand punch that we were talking about earlier. But he can't. He has the habit of dropping it. And it's just a continual issue. Right now, they're up against the cage. Alvarez pushing forward. Uke did throw a nice body knee. Another body knee by Uke. Uppercuts by Alvarez, body knee by Uke. But still, how are they scoring this fight? Uke is landing beautiful straights from the outside. I think he's landed more punches, even putting his back up against the cage. I think he's winning this fight. Nice jab by Uke as well. Uke just looks a bit faster on the feet. And just definitely the length is a serious edge against Eddie Alvarez. Eddie doesn't have the best head movement, and as I said, the left hand is low often. Jabs and straights down the line crack him. You look at the Conor McGregor fight. Eddie Alvarez just is susceptible to those straight punches, man. Especially against guys with the reach advantage. Oak looks amazing right now for a guy, you know, getting his first huge opportunity. Eddie Alvarez has a minute 50. I think he needs a knockout. I don't know if they'll give him a decision. I really don't know if he's won much of this round. I think that Uke has still gotten the better of him, even though he's pushing forward and landed a takedown. That's a nice leg kick by Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez needs a big moment. That's what he needs. To win this fight, he needs a big moment. He can't just accept this. A takedown is not going to do it. It's got to be fake a takedown overhand. He needs to mix it up. He's got a very fast takedown, but Uke has great defense. And no matter how fast it is, when you shoot from that far away, a high-level guy like Uke is going to see that coming. Eddie Alvarez is just continually shooting, but that's not going to win him the fight. That's not going to do anything for him. If you're Eddie Alvarez, you need to go for the finish. It's the only way. The only way is the finish. Left hook by Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez needs to, after that left hook, throw a straight. He needs to unload with the hands and crack Uke. Uke is tired. Uke is a guy you have to attack back. You can't just sit there and let him tee off on you. He has excellent range control. You have to move inside, move your head, and you have to unload. And you, you can't be caught outside because then he'll kick the hell out of you. This guy's excellent. He's very difficult to beat. It takes a very skilled fighter to do the things I just said. Eddie Alvarez is very skilled, but I don't know if he has that level of head movement and distance uh, closing ability to do so. But a left hook does land there. Eddie Alvarez could do it. He has the explosiveness. Yes, sir, man. PFL tomorrow. Can't wait. Oh, spinning back fist by Eddie Alvarez. And a big knee up the center by Uke. This has turned out to be an excellent fight. Left hook by Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez needs a huge moment. There's 10 seconds. He needs to disunload. He needs to throw everything. This is his career here. He's moving forward on Uke. Left hook. Misses for both. That's it. Uke. I think Uke won the fight. I don't know. I think, yeah, in the American scoring, I thought Eddie Alvarez would probably get a decision because I think... Maybe he stole that round, but I don't know, man. I have no idea. One championship is a whole different scoring, so I can't even think of it the same. We have to consider that first round, the knockdown. Scoring the fight as a whole is hell. It's maybe a draw. If you're scoring it as a whole, it's more of a draw because, I don't know, I feel like they had competitive moments. You have like a dominant 10-8 first round and then two 10-9s. That was a great fight. I wouldn't be disappointed to see Eddie win because I want to see Eddie fight for the title. But I don't know if they give it to him. I think they might give it to Uke. I don't know. I don't know. That's tricky. I, 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 who did I feel won the fight? If I'm scoring it on the American system, that's probably leaning towards a draw. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But the problem is one is scoring it so differently than the States. They're not scoring as much of the takedowns. If I'm going one championship scoring, they might give it to Uke here. I really feel... I would say I lean Uke on the one championship scoring. United States scoring system, I'm leaning a draw. If it's a United States mixed with one, I'd say Eddie Alvarez. Because that first round could be a 10-8 in the States.
Either way, excellent fight. I won't be disappointed with whoever gets it because honestly, that was great work. Uk has made himself a contender. Win, lose, or draw here, you're going to see his name around for a while. He, he cemented himself as a contender. That's a great fight, man. One championship, man. They put together some good good fights. There's some legit names outside the UFC. That's what I think we've learned with one championship. I mean, Ray Unuk was a nobody last week. And now he just might have pulled off a win over Eddie Alvarez. We'll see how they score it. Either way, he gave Eddie Alvarez a hell of a fight and dropped him. Let's see how they score it. Yeah, I don't know. The first, was it a 10-8 or a 10-9? It depends on the judge. Judging of, of MMA is, is, when it's so close, it's so subjective, man. It's tricky. I don't know. How would I score it? Maybe a 10-8. I think Ook, but who knows? I'll take either. I'm not disappointed. Let's see who they score for. Ook. They're going to give it to Ook. Yep, told you, Ook. I told you. What did I say, guys? I'm scoring it as one championship would. I know what they're looking for now. It's Ook Rayun. He just beat Eddie Alvarez. Can you imagine that? Last week, we, had, we don't know who the hell this guy was. Now he just beat the former UFC champ. Eddie Alvarez is laughing right now. I think he's pretty pissed. You go to Asia, buddy. You got to deal with the Asian rule set, my man. Doesn't matter. In the States, the scoring is different. I agree. I thought Eddie Alvarez could have got that decision. But I'm scoring it under one championship style. It's a draw. I want to see what the reaction of Eddie Alvarez is going to be after that loss. Because that sucks for him. That really sucks for him. Like I, I like Eddie, man. He's a good dude. Yeah, I didn't bet this either, dude. I, 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 was gonna, I was looking at it. I sat there and I said, you know what? Definitely not betting on Eddie Alvarez. If anything, I said bet on Oak. I wouldn't bet on Eddie at this point, even though I thought he could have won. I don't know. That's one championship scoring, man. I see why they gave it to Oak under one championship scoring. Because they view the knockdown. See, that's the thing. Like, you have to then just, like, in one championship, the way they score, you have, like, it's hard for us American fans because really any fan that hasn't been consistently watching one, because we think of fighting, like, in MMA, round by round by round. They're not scoring it. They're scoring it as 15 continual minutes. So that first round with that huge moment for Ook now counts as, like, let's say it counts as, like, a serious, like, amount. Like, let's say it counts as, like, you know, a six-pointer. I don't know the, the the way they do it in their heads, but it counts as a serious moment. And then Eddie Alvarez winning the next two rounds just scores two points. So with the drop in the six and then the two, boom, they give it to, to Uk. Yeah. Honestly, though, Eddie Alvarez didn't look bad. He got dropped. He recovered. He'll be back. He's not done anytime soon. I do feel like one low-key like i'm not saying they're screwing them on the decisions but they're doing them no favors here no my god I, I under our rule set in the states yes one championship scores things very different they just see it a different way i think i figured out their rule set like they don't score offensive wrestling like they don't if you're not getting top control they don't score it He's getting screwed left and right. I think book the rematch versus the guy who's beating up on Yuri Lapkus. Book the rematch. Or maybe, you know what? Give him Murat Gafarov. That could work. I think he could beat Gafarov. And then maybe give him a title shot. Let's just give Eddie a title shot if he wins one fight. They're going to run out of contenders for Christian Lee. Ray Yoon Hook and Christian Lee, though, I will say, I don't know. That's an interesting fight. I don't know. I'd be interested. I'd be very interested to see what happens. Yeah, I guess like Eddie Alvarez, though, let's be honest, he had his back up against the cage and he was controlling Luke there. Wasn't landing effective takedowns or anything, but that control, that cage control against the cage in the clinch, I don't think they score. I don't think it matters to them. Weird, man.
I don't know. That's one championship. I still like it though. I, I I'll take it. The the fights are good. They gave that fight to Ray Yunuk. A lot of the people in the live chat and understandably even myself, you know, under the American system, how we score fights, felt that it could have been a draw or Eddie Alvarez because Uk really only won the first round. But you know how one championship is not scoring round by round. They're scoring the fight as a whole. The biggest moment in the fight that let's say counts for six points counted more than Eddie Alvarez winning the close rounds, two points, two points. I agree. No, I agree. I agree. Like they, so to them, they're scoring the knockdown is such a significant moment that like, it's almost, you know, what's the best way to, to put it? It's almost impossible to come back on their scorecard. If you get dropped like that, that's the best way to put it. It's like, you need the, to, to finish the fight now because that one knockdown is going to lose you the whole fight because you, now you're winning, but you're not dropping them. They view knockdowns. I think that substantially. it guys that's it it's how it goes man a different scoring system and the fighters now need to understand that if you have a bad first round like a really bad like a 10-8 first round you're probably losing because a two 10 nines to one championship doesn't equal winning now or drawing the fight even they see you as a loser so the draw is now eliminated so now not only do you need a 10-9 and a 10-9 you probably would need a 10-8 and then, what, another 10-9? They'll, then they'll maybe call it a draw? I don't know. Yeah, it's just strange how they... It is strange how they score it, man. It really is. I like to score fights 10-point must system. I think the 10-point must system works effectively, man. I know a lot of people shit on it, but it does work well because moments like that where if... I, I get how they're saying they're scoring it as a whole... But there is a break in between the rounds. Like, if you want to score fights as a whole, I think then you have to just do one... If I was going to score, what would be a perfect amount of time? Would one 12-minute round be like a good amount for a fight of just continuous time? Like a non-championship fight, one 12-minute round, continuous. Like if you're going to score like that really is what I'm saying is it would have to be like Valley Chudo rules. Like the one round, you know, 30 minutes long. I don't know. I personally think 10-point must system is very effective. Rounds are fantastic. It's a sport. It's not a no-holds-barred. So the end of the day the scoring is going to be round by round normally but that they scored as a whole if i would have scored that fight as a whole though i still would have scored a draw i would give you have to give some you can't say that a knockdown it wins you the fight most definitely you can say that now okay you have a draw potential yeah i think i think ray Yunuk did fight good though like, I, I'm still impressed by him. Even though we're saying it could have been a draw, could have went to Eddie, Uke had a great performance. Like, I can't take that away. Win, lose, or draw. It's not Uke's fault if people disagree with the decision. I can see how they gave it to him. He definitely could be a threat to Christian Lee because he has the ability to finish fights. The main thing he's lacking, really, I think just urgency to get off the cage. He, he defends takedowns extremely well, but he just needs to get off the cage faster. I don't know. And the gas tank. The gas tank for sure. I think Christian Lee will be a little bit too much for him. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Smash the likes if you haven't yet. Rainer Dereeter making his way to the E. Dude, he's walking out to a good walkout song. Some Roy Jones stuff. But yeah, one championship... To, the thing to note is if if a dominant first round happens, it's very hard to come back. Now, in a five-round fight, I would assume it's different. I think, so with three dominant rounds, I, I guess in one championship, if it was a five-round fight, Eddie Alvarez would have been able to come back if he won three. Yeah, I think Lee will beat him. You know why Eddie Alvarez got dropped? What was I saying earlier on? The left hand, man, the one simple fix for it, if he just kept it literally like three inches higher, his whole game would change because he could quickly bring it up. He comes inside and he always drops the left, man. And then the straights there, a guy that has good vision is going to see that. And Uke obviously has good vision. I'm actually thinking, though, Shinya Aoki would be a better fight for the world title in a rematch. Like, I don't know. Or maybe they do Ok versus Aoki. Like, does Ok deserve a title shot after beating an unranked guy and Marak Afarov? Yeah, smash the like button, man. Appreciate you. 
Appreciate you, Luke Joe. That's, dude, that is literally, I've felt this for a while. That's literally Eddie's biggest problem. He's got lightning fast hands, bad power. He literally has boxing down, but he doesn't have the movement part. He, his head doesn't flow side to side. For some reason, he gets stuck, and then he'll move his body, but just a little too stiff. In the, if, you, if you're if you going to be stiff, keep your hands up high. He leaves that lead hand low, and then boom, straights land. Sucks to see because Eddie Alvarez has such good tools. I do think... Crazy idea. Maybe he's got to go hit up Trevor Whitman. Like, I don't know. I think all these guys, Trevor Whitman might be the guy to hit up. If you're struggling with your striking, anything wrong, look what he had Uzman do to Masvidal. That guy's a master technician of a coach. Yeah, I'm, we're, we're, we're going Rainer as well here, bro. Rainer's going to choke him out is my prediction. I love Ong Lang on Song too, but I have to just go with the pick. I think that we're going to see the same fight that we saw in the first, but I think Ong La lasts a bit longer. But we will know, of course, you can't doubt Ong La and Song has knockout power, long history of great fights and being extremely durable and good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He got caught in that first fight, though, and his takedown defense early was good. Randy DeReader's in trouble if he gets too close in the punching range, not looking to clinch. I believe he's not going to do that. He's going to clinch up. He's going to eventually find the back, get the submission. Dude, you just said he's a very good Philly boxer, but there's it's it's no head movement. That style is going to get you knocked out by the guys that see the shots well and aren't overwhelmed by the bullying because, you know, Oak had good range control. Really, it's just guys that are a bit taller than you. Eddie Alvarez is always going to struggle with guys that are taller than him with a bit of speed and a bit of pop in the hands. It's just bad matchups. McGregor beat him. I don't know how much taller he was, but he had the reach advantage. In that fight, McGregor was able to drop him multiple times. That straight shot is always there. Even when he, Eddie Alvarez switches his, or rather, uh, when Eddie Alvarez is fighting a southpaw and the stance is switched, he still has openings as he closes distance, man. If you're fast, you see Alvarez's chin a lot. His hands are just, they're like too far away. He, I think he needs to bring it in a little more. More head movement, chin lower. Gets caught, man. He gets caught. It's just a consistent issue with Eddie. I love Eddie Alvarez, but he gets caught. Appreciate everybody tuning in. We're looking for 30 likes. We need just one more. So if you haven't, smash that like button. Very good fight here between Ong La and Song and Rainer De Ritter. I agree. Dude, he, the thing is, he was trying to wrestle, but this kid, he couldn't get the kid down. I, Uk was just, honestly, Uk was just a difficult fight for him. Eddie, I, I, like, I like Eddie, though. He, he, he's a good man, a good fighter. And I appreciate you guys for 30 likes. And I hope Eddie can come back from this because I, I love Eddie, man. He's No matter what technical flaws, like as a fan, you got to love a guy like Eddie because he has that BMF mindset, like, let's fight. Five rounds of action here. I'm excited to see five rounds work. I feel like this the tension is there because you know Ong Lang and Sung is like, I need this victory. Like he's not messing around. There's things going on in this country. There's a lot of pressure on him right now. I would not be disappointed to see Ong Lang and Sung win this fight. One middleweight world champion. Yeah, the, the refs, you know what I've noticed about one good refing as far as TKO stoppages and stuff? I've also noticed that they have pretty high level talent and good production team. So I have to tune in. I love one at this point. Now, Usman doesn't get the BMF title, even though I mean he could. He's a bad man. But he's, you know, I think my brother said it best. He said, Usman is a great fighter. He's not a BMF. He doesn't need that. He's a, he's a great fighter. The BMF is for a guy like, listen, I just want to scrap no matter what. Usman does what he needs to to win, and he happened to be excellent on the feet and knock out um, Jorge Masvidal, but he set it up with very good MMA. I guess BMF would be, if you do BMF fight, Nick Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal, that's a BMF fight. The BMF is not the world championship. Don't get it twisted. The BMF is just like, you're a bad dude. You're the dude that makes the fights entertain you. Mostly saying you're mostly a striker. Is really what the BMF is at this point. If you do Nick Diaz versus Jorge, you could do the 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 bad the bad motherfucker belt. The Burmese Python is scary. He looks intense. Yeah, the refs. I gotta give the the refs credit, bro. I think that they 
are very schooled in one. Kevin Holland, at, at what weight class? Would Kevin Holland be able to make 170 to fight? Dude, if he does, he's going to eat Cowboy Cerrone. That's all I'm saying. I think they should do it at 175. Let's do it. Is Cowboy really down for it? I don't think so. He gets knocked out. I wouldn't. I don't know, man. Cowboy's going to get hurt in that fight. But this fight's about to start up. We got Rainer DeReeder, Ong Lang Unsung. This is for the light heavyweight title. If you remember Ong Lang Sung's last fight, he lost to Rainer DeReeder in the middleweight division, and he lost his middleweight title. He's not looking to lose two titles to this man. He's looking to win and then set up the trilogy. Rainer DeReeder lands a takedown in the opening seconds. This is always trouble for Ong Lang Unsung. Look how quick that takedown landed. That is very dangerous. Ong Lang Sung is already in trouble at this point. If you're on the ground with Rainer DeReeder, you're in a bad position. This guy is amazing with his BJJ. He's working for the back of Ong Lang Sung. On Sung trying to feed him off and keep the uh, forearm placed in between him. But right now, Rainer DeReeder ha almost has the back here. Ong Lang Sung is in serious trouble. Rainer DeReeder has just tripped him and is working towards full mount. Wow. This is amazing. Ong Lang Sung has now given up his back to Rainer DeReeder again. Wow, this is very dangerous. Ong Lang Sung is looking to get out. He's looking to circle out. Rainer DeReeder has excellent awareness on the round. Good work by Ong Lang Sung not giving up his back. But Rainer DeReeder does have half guard here. Much better position for Ong Lang Sung to be on defensively. Great work from Rainer on top. Rainer DeReeder is a specimen of grappling. I think he could probably go up and win the heavyweight title if he wins his fight against Brandon Vera. And I think that's actually a fight. I would say that would be so, so cool to see. Right? No, 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 you're totally right, dude. I would have been like, listen, I'm not giving this guy a title shot. He already beat me down there. I, I, hell no. At this point, he's just ruining his whole life. It will suck for uh, Unsung to lose again, but he looks like he's in trouble. He's fully mounted. He has n no real resistance to this grappling game of Reina Dorito. Dorito's going for an armbar. Dorito is so high level with his grappling. It's a spectacle to see. He has the back of Ang Lang Unsung. Dude, he looks like he's about to do the same thing to him. This is tragic for Ong Lang Sung. His career is about to be finished. Two rear naked choke losses in the first round to the same guy. I thought he would at least make it to the second. So, I mean, it's not over yet, but it's not looking good for Ong Lang Sung. That's so bad, man. That's so bad. That's, that sucks. I feel bad for Ong Lang. Like, as a hardcore fan, a guy, I'm, I call myself an MMA historian at this point. I've been watching for so long. I feel heartbroken to see like these end moments like where your title reign is finished and then this guy takes your title away at another weight class. It's just tragic to see. But that's the fight game, man. It's beautiful. And it's fair. Balance. You have your moments and your moments will come back to you. Yeah, I really do hope he gets paid well. You can't put Ong versus Grapplers. Book the Brandon Vera rematch or something at heavyweight. Like, I don't want to see him in here against Grapplers. I want to see him striking Rainer DeReeder is so good on the ground it's just it's just so hard for him if Ong Lang can survive he always has a puncher's chance here but right now it's not looking good he's getting grounded and pounded as his opponent Rainer DeReeder has the body lock and the back position Ritter is landing big shots too from the back it's a beautiful Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, that he's used I mean DeReeder is a master jiu-jitsu and it shows at a very high level you you know competitively in jiu-jitsu you develop your game you know to obviously have uh effective offensive takedowns and then boom you get top position you kill guys arm triangle that's it he's not gonna get him no he, he's gonna tap him here i think no no online on gets out online on song has so much heart if online on song can somehow come back and win this fight that would be epic. Oh my god, he just cracked him. Ong Lang Sung is unloading shots from the top. Wow, this there's a chance for Ong Lang here. He's in the half guard now. Thunder Ritter's guard. Very dangerous. He has one minute left to survive this fight. Ong is an animal. I gotta give him the respect. He doesn't quit. He's like, fuck no. And honestly, I can feel from his position, like... Yeah, I, I low key like w would prefer to see Ong Lang pull it off because if not, like as you said, man, taking his belt in two weight classes that is that is rough, man. That's a rough thing to deal with. I think he's worried about the takedowns. 
If the Ritter is up on the feet, his offensive takedowns are very good. Ong Lang Song needs to unload some ground and pound. He needs to explode. Big leg kicks from the ground position for Ong Lang Song. He's a tough son of a bitch, man. He didn't give up. But Rainer de Ritter is very good. He's throwing nice high kicks, or rather up kicks. De Ritter is very good with his BJJ. I mean, excellent. So proficient. Yeah. That's Rainer de Ritter's round. I mean, there was moments for Ong Lan Sung, but he didn't win that. Good work so far. Good fight, man. How good is this? Yeah, he survived. Yeah, those leg kicks, you definitely feel them. But uh, uh, Ong La Unsung, it shows how good the Ritter is defensively. I mean, he couldn't get on top towards the end there. La Unsung. Right now, definitely. Randy the Reader winning that round. Reader ties him up, has his back already. The Reader, the Reader is so good with his grappling. It's his constant chain wrestling attack. Very good against the cage. So good on the ground. I think the Ritter could pull guard and put Onling in danger. But look at that left leg. Big bruise. Onling and Sung landed a massive kick. That hurt. That definitely hurt. Onling and Sung landing shots from the top position here. Body shots there. Brutal body shots. Takedown there by Rainer the Ritter. He does land it. Wow. Rainer the Ritter is just so persistent to taking the back. Of Angla. Elbow. Wow. So a body lock here for Rainer de Ritter has somewhat of the backside. Of Ong Lang on Sung does have his leg through as well. This could really be trouble here. Body shots there by Rainer the Yeah, Ong Lang is in excellent shape. He's ready to wrestle. For the full 25 minutes. He lands a big uppercut. If Ong La and Sung can let some punches go. He could put the Ritter down. Most definitely Sung has the power to sleep the Ritter. But if you look. The Ritter very resilient with the ground. Oh that hurt. That, that elbow definitely hurt the Ritter. Ong La and Sung is a hell of an animal. Even from the bottom. This guy's a tank. But the Ritter with his grappling is excellent work. The Ritter is consistently looking for the takedown, but less success. And the longer this fight goes, I kind of start to favor Ong Lang's power just simply because the submissions are a lot harder to pull off when both of you are soaked in sweat. In that first round, that jujitsu is extraordinarily effective. And then in the second and the third, potentially sliding off. The art of war here. MMA, 25 minutes of fighting. I love five round fights. Uh, I wish the uh, more fights were just top contender fights should all just be five rounds. I think like, I don't know, maybe book it like somehow if you're you're fighting in like a title eliminator, do it a, a five round fight. Yeah, I think he could put the Ritter down, man. He landed a big uppercut. It's not, the, the Ritter definitely feels his shots and he knows. And that's why he's looking for the takedowns. He knows Ong Lang can put him down. But on the ground, 
the Ritter is a hell of a beast. I mean, he's looking for arm lock here. He's looking to pass the full mount. He now gets it. Still, I'm not significantly worried just yet if I'm on La because of the slipperiness. But if he can't get this guy out of his mount, he's going to lose. Yeah, he does. He gets out. That right there is the slipperiness advantage here. Right now, the Ritter is looking for the back. That was sick, man. Yeah, definitely. Angla is going to be more tired now. I think at the end of the day, both are going to be fatigued going into this next round. But Angla does have the puncher's chance. Still, De Ritter winning this fight. Most definitely. It's two rounds in, though. We still have three rounds to go. A lot can happen in three rounds. Excellent fights here. These, I wonder how well both these guys would do in the UFC's light heavyweight division. I think De Ritter at middleweight, at least, could, could do very good. It's a very tricky fight for a lot of fighters. And even champion Adesanya, I mean, De Ritter is no easy fight at middleweight. I feel like we may find a way in the UFC. If he wins this fight, his stock is so high in one. I mean, who knows if he has a free agency coming up, maybe. I don't know. The thing is, does the UFC value the one championship belt as much as they should? I don't know if they do. Big elbow there by Ong La. Ritter's on top. He, he's, he's trying to control Ong La. There's 23 seconds, but it's a five-round fight. Got to really give the respect to both men going at it fully through. Eddie did fight, and Eddie lost the decision against Ray Yunuk. A lot of disagreement about the decisions in the live chat. And under the, Jap or rather the Asian scoring, I see how they scored it for Ock. But under the American scoring, it would be a draw or an Eddie Alvarez win. That was uh, Raiders round. It's 2-0. The American system, it's 20-18, to 18, I feel like. But if it's under the system in one, just a dominant grappling round win. Yeah, Eddie can't catch a break, and it's, it sucks. <clears throat> I don't think he wanted to go for that forearm choke. He didn't feel the confidence in it. Good fight so far. Ongla and Sang. Rainer de Ritter. Guys, if you are tuned in now, you're uh, not doing anything a little bit later, very shortly, probably after we end this live stream, about 10, 15 minutes later, I will be going live doing the PFL weigh-in recap. We'll be talking about uh, the PFL event. We'll go through... All of the fighters and the weights and what I think about the card and who I think is going to end up winning the fights. So tune into that if you guys are interested. Live action too. Great shots from the Ritter are landing, but not a ton of damage here. Big takedown attempt by Rainer de Ritter again. And de Ritter is on top once again. Moving towards more dominant position here. He's putting it on Ong Lan Song. If the Ritter can continue to, to land takedowns, this is what he does and he wins the fight. I mean, it's a, it's a lock. I do think Marab Stammen goes the distance. You look at Marab, he's the decisionator. You look at Stammen, he goes the distance a lot. That fight's going the distance for sure. A lot of pressure by De Ritter, a lot of defense for Ang La, but he's still losing the fight. I feel like right now De Ritter is still on his way to winning this fight. De Ritter's last name means deny. I didn't know. That's pretty cool, actually. He's a good fighter, and right now he has the back of Ang La and Song. If he can get the submission again, that would be impressive. The question becomes, is now Angla eliminated from the middleweight rankings? Does he not have a chance at a trilogy with Rainer the Ritter if he loses? I don't know how that works at all. But the Ritter has a chance. I mean, if he can become a two-weight champion, I don't know how the title defenses will work, how often he'll need to fight in one. Let's hope we're consistently back on TNT because one championship on TNT always delivers action Good fights. Right here, you're seeing very high-level grappling by Rainer the Ritter. 
Strong resistance for Ong Lan Sung not to get finished, but he's in bad positions. Three minutes left. Right now, Ong Lan Sung is spinning out and looking to get into the guard of Rainer de Ritter. De Ritter now moves forward and gets the full mount on Ong Lan Sung. Ong Lan is just out grappled here, it seems. Oh, Rainer de Ritter gets under. Able grip position throwing the knees. Someone going for an anaconda choke here, it looks like. The judges could potentially screw it up, man. Definitely. But not in this fight here. This, this is more. Nice knees by the Ritter in this position. Hong Lan Sung. He needs to surmount some type of off offense. I mean, he's lost. These three rounds have been dominant. 10-9s. Somebody might score to 10-8 if it's the States here. I mean, he's got to count fairly substantially. This gable grip position that you see by Rainer de Ritter throwing the knees, I mean, that's good. that's good stuff, and it's working well. Take advantage of those knees to the head because they definitely are valuable. Oh, definitely. Marab could be... I mean, if that fight is competitive with stamina, it, it could be a robbery. It definitely... It happens in the UFC too often. As it? MMA just has bad decisions sometimes, man. It's just, it's just fighting in general. Boxing too. Judging is not an easy job. I mean, I try to do it here live, and I feel like I, I'd probably be a lot more uh, credentialed than some of these judges, man. I mean, I don't think all of them are even fans of the game. I, I think some of them don't study the game. I don't know. Just like, do they look at it as just a day job? Because there's some decisions that are just ludicrous to me. You think that if you want to judge mixed martial arts, you would be a passionate person about the sport and the improvement of it. As of right now, Rainer de Ritter continuing with a wrestling heavy attack. He's definitely had some big moments in this round and definitely did win this round. So right now, the Rid is winning. They keep bringing up how they're scoring it as an overall bout. But there's so much control time. Like, that's got to count for something significant. Dude, I don't know exactly what you mean. The house. Are you saying like uh, the judges like will just give it to the guy that's like, you know, favored to win by like the UFC or whatnot? Ang Lan Sung has lost three rounds. That's something to know. Something to know. Good fight so far though. You gotta you gotta give it up. I'm actually really enjoying the action. Throughout these one fights, I mean, they consistently deliver, man. They're good fights. EFL tomorrow, that's exciting. I'm excited to see what happens on those cards, man. Definitely some interesting matchups on PFL. PFL is a very interesting organization at this point. True. Okay. So whoever the money is more... I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get exactly what you mean, TJ Kill. And there's money behind these fights, so 100% possible. Especially you see it in boxing. Ooh, good work right now for the takedown. Ritter. The Ritter is just consistently getting Ang La and Sung down. And if Ang La can't defend the takedown, what is he going to do? Just right away, takedown. Ang Lung Sung doesn't have the wrestling ability to compete. So you're saying if you play Marab decision, they might give it... If it's close enough to give it to Stammen by a split decision, they will. I get exactly what you mean. Could be. I mean, 
the end of the day, who knows what ties are behind the scenes. Still, I hope there's a few purest judges out there that, that don't that don't have fool around at all. The Ritter's looking for a submission here. He looks for the armbar. So Ong Lan Sung is surviving the grappling. I mean, I think he could deal with this attack right now. I mean, especially being as slippery as he is, not looking in trouble for a submission, but he's just constantly in bad positions. He's being controlled, and the Ritter's winning this fight. The Ritter has excellent jiu-jitsu, and he's really working hard towards a finish. He just hasn't got it yet. I have to give him stern respect. He's a very entertaining fighter with good grappling skills, like notable grappling. Like, he's very good with Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Ong Lan Song giving up his back, though. Ritter looking for a submission of his own. The Ritter has the back completely. He's had the back throughout this fight at this point. Excellent work for Ong La and Song here. Or rather for the Ritter, totally. Disrespect Ong La. Excellent, I mean, defense, he's surviving. But as far as competitive fight, no. As far as opportunities offensively that he's capitalized on, minimal. I mean, there haven't been many because he can't stop the takedown here. And it's a Rainer de Ritter domination as of right now. Controlling. Moving. Not really. Just dominant control from the back. Ong Lan Sung is looking to spin out, but it's just nothing there. And he hasn't been able to do much. De Ritter now has the backside position. And now he gets the hooks back in and does have the back of Ong Lan Sung. He now has the body lock of Ong Lan Sung. It's going to be very tricky for Ong Lan Sung to get out of this position. He might spend the rest of the round in this position. There's really nothing he's able to do as far as resistance goes. The Ritter is very high level with his jiu-jitsu. And it's just an obvious level difference on the ground between these two. Yeah, he does. He, you know what it is? He gets tired, as we all do. But he's, his grappling from jiu-jitsu is just so high level that it's instinctual. Yeah, De Ritter, honestly, is very good, man. I think Rainer De Ritter in the middleweight division is a problem. As far as the light heavyweight division goes, I think the strength of you know, like a UFC caliber top guy or like a Corey Anderson, that would be hard for him. But fighting at middleweight, I think that De Ritter could be a very interesting fighter even inside of the UFC. He's a very strong grappler. Complete dominance for Ritter here on this whole fight. It hasn't been close at all. This is all the Ritter all night. All the Ritter. Yeah. This, dude, I would like to see the Ritter in the UFC. I mean, beating Alan Song is notable. He was very dominant and won for a while. And he has very good skills. Alan Song is looking for a bit of an Ezekiel choke from the bottom. Very, it would be very unlikely he would get it, especially not having the neck completely. And I mean, that submission is very low percentage, especially on somebody as high level as uh, the Ritter. Not much happening here besides the Ritter dominating on top. Round and pound here. Rain of the Ritter is dominating throughout, though. Yeah, he moves very well on the ground. Guys that would give him difficulty are guys with very good wrestling bases. I think a Derek Brunson could potentially be trouble, but I think that the Ritter could. Um, I think... Guys that wrestle well will, will give him problems. He's very tall, though, so that would be an advantage. I think Brunson has the power. But I think that the Ritter could make a run. Even in the UFC middleweight division, man. Shoot. Good. 
this fight's at light heavyweight and he still looks good. But naturally at middleweight, I, I think he's even better. I mean, he got Ang Lang Sung done in the first. See, this is to end season one, one on TNT. So this is the last one of this season. I wonder when they're going to come back. I just hope they permanently keep it on TNT. Just keep one. Don't even call it, call it one on TNT or just call it one championship. Leave it on TNT. Book a deal. Get these guys on American television. Control here by the Ritter. He lands a takedown. He's now in the half guard of Ong La and Song. Derrida throwing some good shots from the, the bottom, or rather, only a song from the bottom position, trying to throw some strikes. Not much. Yeah, good takedown defense is something that would be a difficulty for him. A guy with a wrestling base guy that just is a good generalist. Ong La and Sung seems to struggle with the wrestling ability, or rather with the defensive wrestling ability, I should say. And a guy like the Ritter exposes that because he's just so resilient. And the thing is, the Ritter from the top is very good. Yeah, I would like to see eight fight cards, four prelims, and then four in the main card. I, I would love to uh, see one championship more often. I think they have a serious opportunity to be huge on American television. They need to get a better time slot. They need to be on there more consistently, and they, ne they need eight fight cards. The Ritter in the full mount here. But I think they can make a run towards Bellator most definitely. Good fighters, man. Full mount for Rainer De Ritter here. Body shots by Ang Lan Sung from the bottom position, but De Ritter has this fight pretty much locked up. Ritter has a huge opportunity. Wow. Ang Lan Sung gets in the top position. He has three minutes and he needs a knockout or a submission. Doubtful he'd get a submission off the Ritter. But I mean, he could always pull off a knockout potentially when he's on the top. The Ritter landing big strikes from the top position here. Angla needs serious, serious money. Song on the top. Gonna be looking to throw strikes from that top position. Hong Lun Sung on top. The Ritter. Cool guard. Hong Lang Sung on the top. Round and pound from the top position to the body. Orang Lan Song. He's about to take his world title. Even if Ong Lan finishes on top, he lost the fight clearly. This is doing nothing for Ong Lan Song. He needs to break apart, get round and pound going, just unload. Ong Lan is losing this fight. There's no chance. Right now, I think Ong Lan's best shot move up to heavyweight. Fight a fun fight versus Brandon Vera in the rematch for the heavyweight belt. I think he'll still get it. He was the former double champ. He has a lot of respect in the organization, but the Ritter just has his number. Certain matchups, man. Guys just have your number. The Ritter has the puzzle to beat the puzzle pieces all together to beat. 60 seconds left. There's not gonna be much that Ong La can really do. Uh, he's being completely held and restrained by De Ritter. De Ritter knows he has 55 seconds. He's, he looks like he might be working towards an arm trap and then an arm bar attempt, but uh doesn't seem likely here. De Ritter moves very well off his back. I will give credit where it's due. He really does. Angla is not able to do much from the top position. De Ritter realizes he has the fight won. He has 30 seconds before becoming a two-weight world champion. 
really doesn't have to do much. He's getting the victory guaranteed no matter what, unless Ong La gets a knockout. And it doesn't seem likely, extremely unlikely to see that. 20 seconds. Ground and pound by Ong La. Just 15 seconds. Very good uh, holding on in defense by DeRitter. I mean, he's doing exactly what wins you a decision. It's, it's excellent work. It's how you win the decision. Hold the guard here and don't get finished. That's it. You take advantage of the time. Why does Ong La have his hands up saying yes? Come on. I love you, Ong La. You didn't win that. If you give that fight to Ong La and Song, you're, con you're a controversial organization. No chance. No, oh, okay. Even the commentators are disagreeing. Let's see. Let's see what happens, guys. See how they score it. Yeah, they all agree. All the judges, or rather, all the commentators agree that he didn't win the fight. I was getting nervous in here. Let's see what uh, they both have to say after the fight. I wonder what's next for DeRitter after this win, too. He's about to get an the winner just a moment. Reiner de Ritter, man. Put it all on Ong Lan Song. He just didn't have the ability to keep up with this guy on the ground. There was no competition when they hit the ground. It was all de Ritter all night long. He pulls it off and he gets it done. Right now, the full mount, the, the Ritter, they're, they're showing. I mean, it was most of this fight. He had mount. He just he dominated the whole thing. I mean, we're looking at the highlights. We just saw what happened. It was one-sided traffic continually with a very heavy grappling approach by De Ritter. And he did exactly what was needed to be done. And he landed some decent ground and pound. Never got near a finish, really, besides, you know, moments. Um, but maybe the mount moments. But not really that substantial. Good performance, though, nonetheless. And he gets the victory. Let's see. Ong La went five rounds. See how they score it. Winner, let's see. Who do they give it to? All three judges score it. Unanimous decision. Rainer de Ritter. Yeah, of course. Unanimous decision. Okay, not a problem. And new. Yeah. Yeah, he just took on Lang's title in two weight classes, man. The grappling was just way too much. This guy's a two-weight champ. That's pretty sick. Fourteen and zero is Reina De Ritter now. The only man ever to take two titles from the same man across any weight division. That's very interesting. Yeah, that is true. In any major organization, it's never been done. Rainer, the Dutch Knight de Ritter. He's a fucking grappling specialist. He's very good on the ground. I really... I, if they give Nick Diaz Hamzat, I'll be pissed off. I don't like that fight at all. Why are you giving him Hamzat? Hamzat, I love Hamzat. And he's, he's so fun to watch. And he's a beast. But I really don't want to see Nick Diaz, his first fight back, being thrown in there against a guy that fought three times last year. Nah, don't do that fight. That's bullshit if they do that fight. Give him Masvidal. Give him Carlos Condit. Give him Robbie Lawler. Give him Diego Sanchez. Give him Conor McGregor. I don't know. Give him Dustin Poirier. Give him who else is a fun fight. You know, give him fun fights. Don't screw the man. I don't like that Hamza fight one bit. Appreciate you guys for 31 likes. They're talking to Reina de Ritter right now. I want to hear what these guys are saying, man. What are they talking about? Let's see. Who's next? Next. Who's next? Same song. 
正数。正数。He's a true champion. Thank you, man. Thanking his coaches. Thanking his wife. Shout out now his son and daughter. He's calling out. He called out Brandon Vera. Oh shit, I love this guy. Randy the Ritter just earned me as a fan. I'm about to follow this man on Instagram right now. Randy the Ritter just got himself MMA experts follow. We're in. We're on the hype train. Let's go. Wow, this guy's this guy's the man. Listen, bro, we're gonna hit up Randy the Ritter. We're gonna DM him. We're gonna see if he's willing to do an MMA experts interview. If any of you that are uh, on Instagram that follow me, hey, maybe hit up Rainer the Ritter and mention my name or something. He'll eventually see one of us if we go out there and get his attention. So we'll see. Just be like, yo, MMA experts. We'll see. I'm going to try to hit him up, man, because I would love to talk to this guy because he, he's an absolute specimen. And I think that he might be one of the best grapplers on the planet. And I really do feel like this guy's a contender across all weight classes. Um, you know, in one championship, I think he's going to end up winning that heavyweight title against Vera potentially. And I think in the UFC, this guy would be very, very good. So we'll see, man. We'll reach out and I'll see if we can get an interview with uh, Rainer the Ritter here on the channel. But hey, you guys want to hit him up too? Mention my name. Check him out. Rainer the Ritter. His ad is D D Ritter MMA. So D E Ritter, just his last name, D Ritter MMA. Let's see, man. We'll see if he replies. Good fighter though, man. And I'm a big fan. Excellent work. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I think what we'll see next, it's got to be that Brandon Vera fight. This guy's the real deal. I am super impressed with the very good Rainer de Ritter. On the ground, he's a specimen. I mean, the guy's got cardio for days. He'll grapple the hell out of you. He's an excellent fighter. He's a two-way world champion, and I think he's going to be earning himself a third belt. I think he beats Brandon Vera for sure. And I think that would be an excellent fight. I love that call out. And he's uh, earned me as a serious fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan now. He's a beast. And I like that he's going for the biggest challenge out there and doing something that's undone. Thank you everybody for tuning in to the live stream. I'm pretty much done with this video. So what's coming momentarily? What time is it right now? It's 11. So by 12.05, I'm going live for the PFL weigh-in recap. If you want to stick around and tune in for that, wait for it. It'll be coming up very soon. Uh, that is pretty much it for this video. I will unload some post-fight coverage as well for the full card, probably after the weigh-in recap. Won't do that one live. We'll have one, that one probably posted up at like 1 a.m. But all right, guys, check out the weigh-in recap momentarily. Going live in about 15 minutes. Thank you all so much for tuning in. See you guys in a little while.